meeting of the Orient Township Board of Trustees to order for Monday, May 6th. Welcome, everyone. Great to see you all here this evening. Um, I would like to ask everyone to uh, please stand. Uh, we're going to be starting off with our invocation, followed by our pledge. Our pledge is going to be led tonight by the Oakview Cyber Dragons here as our special guest tonight. Oh, we need to call the roll. We'll call the roll first. Sorry, I got all excited. But you can still stand. You can. Still, this will take one second. So Chris Barnett. Here. Penny Schultz here. Kim Urbanowski. Here. Brian Burney. Here. Julia DeRimple. Here. Mike Flood. Here. Matt Pfeiffer. Here. We are all here. So I got so excited about our guests, I <laughs> forgot the most one of the more important parts of the meeting. All right. Um, I will lead our invocation, followed by the Cyber Dragons leading our pledge. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for tonight and the beautiful weather we're experiencing and the opportunity that we all have to be part of an amazing community and for those of us up here to volunteer and serve uh, the community that we love. We pray that you give us wisdom and guidance tonight, and we thank you for everyone that's here tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance. Oh. To the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, Thank you all. You can be seated. All right. Uh, next item on tonight's agenda, we have a public hearing. This is for a special permit for the Orion Lighted Parade Group. Uh, they are not here tonight, but this is a regular annual event, which we support uh, in a part of the process required by our ordinance. So I would uh, turn it over to Clerk Schultz. So the request is to hold a public hearing to consider whether to recommend approval or denial of the special permit application to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. In March 2024, the board received a special permit application from the Orion Lighted Parade Group seeking a one-day nonprofit special liquor license permit to serve alcoholic beverages for the Holly Jolly fundraiser on December 6, 2024. Per Township Ordinance, alcohol beverage regulations, a public hearing is required to consider whether to recommend approval or denial of the special application and the, of the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Public hearing is scheduled for tonight uh, for the Ordinance 76. Following the hearing, the Board of Trustees will determine whether to approve or deny the special permit application for the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Okay, thank you. That's the purpose of the public hearing right now. Does anyone want to address us regarding this annual uh, fundraiser event? And the reason it's in front of us is required by our ordinance. Anyone want to address the Holly Jolly Folly and Lighted Parade? Seeing no one come forward, we'll declare that public hearing was held at 7.04 p.m. And we will move on to the next part of our agenda, which last meeting, many of you were here, uh, three weeks ago, we swore in uh, four firefighters, and one of those firefighters was not able to be here, uh, but he is here tonight. So if firefighter Tony DeFada could please come forward and bring your family if you'd like, anyone that's with you, I'd love to have you all come up. We're so excited to have Tony and the rest of uh, the folks that we brought in last meeting joining our force. We uh, and, and toast also we want to thank Tony for his service. He served and is a proud veteran of our military. So thank you uh, for that as well. All right, moving on. We uh, always have good news at the front end of our meetings, and we are joined by special guests. I have the T-shirt on. They are here. Uh, really excited. A month or so ago, I got to go visit. 
the Oakview Cyber Dragons, Team 8580, uh, as they were um, practicing uh, and continuing their season, uh, they meet over at the Cirque building and got to learn about what they're, what they're about and what they do. But it's more than just building cool robots. So we are joined by them tonight. They're going to come forward. So come, come on up, uh, Team 8580, and you can go right to the podium or um, whoever's speaking, because we have millions of people that watch us from home, <laughs> including my mom and my daughters who are out of state, so we want to make sure they hear you too. So whoever is speaking, if you could speak in the microphone, and uh, I'll turn it over to you, gentlemen. Good evening, Township Board members. We are the Cyber Dragons, Team 8580, from Oakview Middle School. We are one in four middle schools school robotics teams in the district. Our, our team currently has 11 members. We will be conducting interviews at the end of the month to enlist four new members for our next season. The Cyber Dragons formed in 2014, but we have run into bumps along our journey, and the team fizzled out during the pandemic. In the years since, we have managed to grow stronger. We grew so much that this past season, we, need to, we needed to add a fourth team to the district. This team is called Hydra. They are a combination of the students from all three middle schools. As a part of FIRST, for inspiration and recognition of science and technology, our team follows the main principle of the program, gracious professionalism and cooperation. Gracious professionalism is a way of doing things where teams compete intensely while also treating each other with respect and empathy. Cooperation, a combination of the words cooperation and competition, means to compete but also help each other whenever possible. We have many examples of these principles by helping other teams with parts, giving advice on coding, and even choosing teams to be a part of our alliance in order to help them advance further into the competition. Every season we get a new game to play. The first 30 seconds of the game are completely autonomous, and the last two minutes of the game are driver controlled. This past season was called Center Stage. In, the, in this game, along with the Alliance partner, had, you had to transfer pixels, hexagonal shaped pieces, from one corner of the field to the backstage with a backdrop. Um, to, remove from one, uh, to move from one side of the field, uh, you either had to go under a rig or through the stage door. The more pixels you were able to get on the backdrop, the more points you earned. In the end, in the end game or the last 30 seconds, you could launch a drone, paper, a paper airplane that was suspended, oh, oh, and suspend from the rigging um, for even more points. To play the game, we designed and built this robot who we named Bowserbot. It is named Bowserbot because it sort of has a resemblance to the head of Bowser from Super Mario. We had lots of prototypes before we came up with this design. The wheels at the front rotate in opposite directions to lift a pixel up and in. Spinning star wheels then transfer the pixel through the robot to the bucket. As the Viper arm extends, gravity tilts the bucket vertical. A servo controlling a cover on the bottom of the bucket, the bucket can be opened, allowing the pixel to drop out onto the game backdrop. A servo also controls a pin that can be pulled to release our drone. To hang from the rigging, we release constant force springs that shoot upwards. A pulley system then pulls Bowser off the ground. In order for our robot to actually function, we have to apply code. To code, we use a program called Kotlin. In the beginning autonomous period, the robot moves and completes tasks entirely based on the code we have programmed. In this game, our robot had to detect where a prop was on the field and then place a pixel on the line that the, the team prop was located. The location of the prop is random, so we had to teach Bowser what to do with every possible scenario. To, protect, to practice the scenarios, we used a motion planning library called Roadrunner, which is like a GPS for Bowser, and ran simulations on an application called Meep Meep. Code is also used to program what the robot does when certain buttons are pressed 
on the driver controller. We had a great season. At the Rochester qualifier, we made it to the finals match and earned the first place Motivate, second place Connect, and second place Inspire awards. We also received our ticket to the state championship. At the Pelston qualifier, we were a captain in the finals match and earned first place Control, second place Connect, and second place Inspire awards. At the state championship, we were the captain of the fourth alliance and made it to the division finals. In the end, we ended up ranking in the top 10 teams of the state. At the conclusion of this season, we also ranked 30th out of 7,134 teams in the world for scoring in an end game. Besides the, robot, besides the robot game, a big part of what our team does is outreach and community service. We just recently hosted a STEM or a STEAM night at Blanston's Elementary. We also cleaned up Lake George Road as part of an adopt a, pro, or adopt a road program. We helped feed over 990 families by running, or, yeah, by running the food pantry at Oakland Hope. Our goal this season is to do 1,000 hours of service. So far, we have accomplished 455 hours. Another thing we'd like to do is connect with local businesses to learn how robotics plays a role in what they do. We have visited JR Automation, Fanic, Multimatic, On TV, and even Imagine Theaters. If you have any insight to other companies we might be able to visit, uh, we would love to hear about it. <coughs> We would like to thank the CERC for providing us space to hold our meetings and build our robots. Having a place to call our own has been a game changer. We hope that we continue to, to get support from the school system and township as the robotics program in Lake Orion progresses. The average FTC season, <coughs> season costs approximately $5,000. We rely solely on donations and sponsors to fund our expenses. Our goal for this upcoming season, titled Into the Deep, is to raise $15,000. We want to provide sustainability and secure for our team in the years to come. And we also strive to make it to the world competition next spring. Thank you for giving us the time to tell you a little more about the Cyber Dragons. What? So, this is a parent-run, <laughs> parent-driven team. Uh, all of our middle school teams are. You know, it's, it's very much the parents that are sitting here uh, we all are what the mentors, the driving factor, you know, trying to come up with whatever we don't know to help the kids go along. Um, but one small ask that we would have of the township <laughs> is in the future when you're thinking of maybe a new building project, maybe a STEM center, something that we can do, bring more to the community for science, technology, you know, engineering, art, and math. So, I mean, that would be, that would be huge for us. Um, I know the CERC was mentioned. The CERC's been a huge benefit. We also know that it's slated for destruction in the near future. So we will be looking for a new home at some point. I just want to add, if there's any companies you know of in the township that are willing to sponsor any of the teams, we'd like to hear about it. And if anybody has any questions, Myself, I'm the head coach, or any of the kids, or other parent mentors are open to answering any of your questions. We also have our robot here that we can kind of maybe give a little demo of what it does. Anybody have questions? Anybody have questions from the field or from the uh, um, board? Can, can you make one to mow the grass out at the parks? <laughs> there you go. There's your summer project. Yeah. Uh, how, how long did this, this particular robot take this group uh, of, of folks to make? Gentlemen, I was going to say. I think that's the case. Well, you've got to come to the podium. Come up to the podium. <laughs> It takes about six weeks to make um, every robot that we have. How many hours do you put in? Like six weeks, is that uh, twice a week you guys meet for a couple hours? or? Uh. <laughs> so we learn our new game at the beginning of September. 
Um, at that point, we meet three times a week um, for a couple hours each time. And then in the state of Michigan, our competitions start at the end of October or uh, beginning of November. So we only have from September till like November to completely design, build, code, learn to drive <laughs> the robot. And then we have competitions are usually November, December. The state championship is in mid-December. Thank you very much. Well, Super cool. These are our young engineers and computer programmers of the future. Yes, awesome. these are all middle school students. Awesome. Okay, so this is the pixel. This is a small piece of plastic that is going to be setting on the floor like this. The robot then has to pick up this pixel from this orientation, put it in this orientation to match the backdrop that we have over here, and drop it. But the constraints are the robot has to start in less than an 18 by 18 by 18 inch cube. And some of these lines are 30 inches off the ground. So we have to, you know, they have to come up with something to pick this up, change its orientation, and drop it. And so there's the robot. You guys can drive it around a little bit. You can hear it trying to pick up a pixel. That's cool. Well, no pressure. <laughs> I, I, I will say this is not our normal drive team. <laughs> Our drive team consisted of eighth graders. They've been uh, let go of their duties of the team. <laughs> oh, there we go. How's it handle roundabouts? <laughs> yeah. I think it likes our floor surface. Oh. I thought you were <laughs> it's okay. No. It just goes like doing great, guys. We're also a little rusty as we haven't driven this robot since December. Uh, you're doing a good job. I assure you it works better than yeah. anything any of us. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. That's awesome. So um, we do something cool, and they don't know about this. Um, but I've had a great privilege to get to know these young people, and they, um, what, what re is remarkable to me is not just all the hours they put in for this, and they will be our future engineers, and I told them I hope a lot of them stay here in our community, um, but the amount of community service they do above and beyond. So I'm proudly wearing my Cyber Dragon shirt that they gave me when I went to visit them. But every month we um, recognize our brightest and best citizens. They go on our wall of fame forever. They go on our website forever and they're on our wall of fame for a year. You might have noticed a big video wall when you come in, scrolls through our citizens of the month. And so this month, surprise, um, the Charter Township of Orion gratefully expresses its appreciation to the Oakview Cyber Dragons for representing the Orion community in the Lake Orion School District with distinction. The Oakview Cyber Dragons not only excel on the competition floor, but volunteer at Oakland Hope every month, do adopt road cleanup every quarter, and can be seen at community events volunteering doing community outreach. So we, the Township Board, present to you the Oakview Cyber Dra Dragons, our Citizen of the Month Award, the 6th day of May, 2024. So one more award for your trophy case. Congratulations. One follow-up while Chris is changing. Uh, you know, if you guys need uh, volunteer opportunities, my card's on the wall out there. Reach out, and uh, I could definitely use uh, this crew. Yeah. 
Well, as you guys um, break that down, thank you again for being here and congratulations for being such amazing uh, role models for the rest of our community to follow. You don't have to be an adult to be to make an impact in our community and you guys are doing just that. And I was absolutely so impressed with your maturity when I met with you last month and again tonight. So congratulations, thank you. All right, moving on to um, the most awkward transition uh, in all of board meetings always, from the good fun news to paying our bills. I'd entertain a motion to approve the bills tonight and then we can have some discussion if there needs to be. Yeah, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to pay the bills in the total amount of $2,269,633.75. Just Support. one small. Moved by Rubinowski, supported by Flood. Uh, did you have something you wanted to add? A comment? Yeah, I mean, you know, you may have noticed um, that the uh, the services for our Oakland County Sheriff's Department is getting a little bit, it looks like it's a little bit more than normal, um, but that is because, of course, we're still helping cover the village. So that bill looks a little bit bigger, but then we recover that, that money. So um, that's why the, the bill looks a little bit bigger this month. Thank you for that. And they have uh, asked us twice now to extend from the initial term. I've been working with Lieutenant Ophir on that, and we are happy to continue supporting them as long as they need assistance uh, from the township. All right, uh, any other comments or questions on the board run? If not, um, clerk shall so a motion, or um, a roll call vote would be in order. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ernie? Yes. Dalrymple? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Uh, on to a proclamation. We do proclamations on a regular basis here. Uh, these, are, these are statements of the board that are important for our whole community and tonight. <laughs> We are recognizing uh, that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. This is certainly an important issue in our community. And I don't read these things in total, but I'll just highlight they are available on our website. And on that note, if you are here watching, you can see everything the board sees tonight. There's 530 pages of information we'll be working through. Don't worry, guys. It's not going to hopefully take us all night. But um, this is in there as well. And we know it's important to recognize that mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being, affects how we think and act, how we handle stress and other uh, make choices. Therefore, uh, and it's, it's recognized across the country in May, and also we are encouraged by Oakland Community Health Network, OCHN, who's a great partner of ours uh, in promoting their new Where to Start campaign. Uh, so therefore, I, Chris Barnett, supervisor of the Charter Township of Orion, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2024 is Mental Health Awareness Month and call upon our citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses and schools to recommit our state to increasing awareness and understanding of mental illness and the need for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental illnesses to promote recovery and a higher quality of life. And there are many resources available throughout our community. Um, many of the board members serve on boards of Love Inc. Um, and other um, folk gr groups and there's also a resources tab on our website if people need help. Um, there are lots of ways to get it. We are here to help. Um, with that, I will move on to um, public comment. This is an opportunity to address your township board on items not on tonight's agenda. I know we have a lot of folks here that are interested in item 10A, uh, the MARSA Consent Judgment Amendment. That is on the agenda tonight uh, as the first item of pending business, so we will take comment on that item uh, at that time. But if you're here about something that's not on tonight's agenda, uh, we ask you to come forward, state your name and address for the record, and please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Hi, my name is Catherine Kennedy, and I just want to uh, bring people more awareness of what's actually going on in our country, our community, and through the automotive industry. I did my research on the World Economic Forum website, wefourum.org, and everybody should be doing that research. It's actually not a good organization. It's not for the social well-being of humanity, what they're doing. And it's actually, I would describe it more like a members only pay to play club of billionaires that go to Davos, Switzerland once a year to plot against how they can make more money off the rest of us. They are targeting the United States, along with the United Nations, which probably most people don't realize the president of the Security Council of the United Nations right now is Russian. Our government seems to be funding both sides of a war 
in the Middle East, and we are giving away our global manufacturing abilities through digital transformations, and I keep accidentally tripping over things I don't even look for, like the Securities Exchange Notice for, I was looking for chat, I've been researching chat, the chat GPT, the AI that was indoctrinated. It was actually, I stopped using Microsoft Office September 30th of 23 because they added the chat GPT artificial intelligence bots into the software update itself. And then in January, I got notice that Gmail was going to be becoming Microsoft Outlook so that's even a bigger email monopoly. And frankly, I got censored all the time with Gmail, so I was switching elsewhere. But they converted the whole thing to Microsoft as well. So again, the same chat GPT is there. And behind the chat research on the Fidelity website, I found the SEC Form 6K report of foreign private issuer pursuant to Rule 13A16 for Changhua Telecom Company Limited out of Taiwan. And what this report is about, it says Changhua Telecom donated three sets of one web low orbit satellite terminal equipment to the Ministry of Digital Affairs. And supposedly to build earthquake disaster relief communication network in Hualien, but why is it in our U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission reports anyway? It does say the relationship with the company is government-related entities. Um, they don't give any reasons for objection. They just have NA a lot of places where you would think something of this kind of national security would be aware. And then if you look at the, uh, where they have you, the Center for Advanced Manufacturing <laughs> and Supply Chains, the countries that are involved, the nine hubs globally, Basque Country, Spain, Denmark, Lombardy, region, Italy, Qatar, Thank Saudi you. Arabia, Tamil Nadu, India, I'm almost done, Turkey, Republic of Korea, U.S. Center for Manufacturing Engineering. So out of all those countries, only San Francisco was in America until Oakland County accepted the opportunity to join with our $3 million tax funds on May 12th of 2022, the same day they created the land bank. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else want to give general public comment on non-agenda items at this time? Very quickly. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mike Manser. I live on uh, Canoe Circle. Uh, this is my 35th year of living here, and I have really nice things to say. Uh, I recently started uh, swimming at the pool, and I think the facility is amazing. I'm, I'm really pleased we have it. Uh, I can say nothing but good things about living here. I'm looking forward to working with Aaron. I, I'm the founder of Hawkwoods Nature Center and spent much of my life uh, doing uh, teaching, 36 uh, years of eighth grade. But I, I love living in our community. I'm recently a um, uh, Rotary member and finding it to be a tremendous way of serving the community. I'm working on a project now identifying all of the historical markers here in our area and uh, we're now deciding to do the entire state of 8,100 historical markers uh, that uh, Rotary will be doing. But thank you very much. Uh, I really am a, very pleased to live here in Orion Township. Thank you for your comments, and thank you for your willingness to volunteer in our community. We're grateful for you. Anyone else want to give general public comment? Seeing no one move forward at this time. We will close the call to the public, give you chances to speak with us later. Move on to approval of tonight's agenda. That's our plan for the evening. I have no changes. I'd entertain a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Mr. Supervisor. Mr. Flood. To approve the agenda as presented. Support. support. Uh, I heard Bernie first. Uh, so moved by Flood, supported by Bernie. Any comments, questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That's our plan. Tonight's consent agenda consists of the following items in uh, A through I. See you later, Cyber Dragons. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for coming. 
the items, the following items A through I will all be voted on with one vote. So if you're here to discuss any of these items, we'd ask you to come forward to the podium at this time. Uh, we'll be approving two sets of minutes. We we'll approving our quarterly budget adjustments, hiring an aquatics supervisor. We will be um, confirming the pr procedure for a conditional rezone and variance request uh, with an attorney opinion there included. Approving our 2024 West Nile virus prevention program participation. Approving the Mill Lake Gardens Private Road SAD Schedule 5 uh, hearing on the proposed role. Awarding a bid for our sewer re rehabilitation project with a budget adjustment and approving our e-plan soft, uh, review software integration uh, with the building department. Is there a motion, Mr. Flood? Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Support. Moved by Flood, supported by Pfeiffer. Uh, comments or questions, I have a couple, but I'll go to you all first, Mr. Flood. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Goodlow couldn't be here tonight, and uh, the software update, that's to bring in the building department up to speed with all the BSNA uh, that we're on now with all our uh, platforms. Any other board comments? Is Mr. David Kurtek in the room? There he is with the baby. Could you come forward, sir? Please. Oh, oh, oh. your time is up. You're done, Chris. <laughs> um, we will vote first, but um, just want to let the board and the community uh, meet. Assuming the vote is affirmative, our new aquatic supervisor, Mr. David Kurtek, comes with extensive uh, experience in the um, in the realm of aquatics, and uh, we're super grateful to be able to recruit him uh, and have him join our team. And uh, Aaron, I don't know if you want to share anything, but um, I was, I sit on all the second interviews for 12 years now of people that are looking to join our team so they can learn the culture and what's kind of expected and who we are as a family here, because we are, and that we provide the best service in local government. And um, I can't think of one that was more exciting than sitting down with, <laughs> with Mr. Kurtek. Aaron? I, I would just agree with that. Um, he fits in with our culture so great. Orion is such a wonderful place to live. Um, we saw the need for uh, excellence in the aquatic area, and we're very confident David will bring it. So it's just an important asset. Uh, life safety is crucial, and he'll be a wonderful amenity or asset to the community. So awesome. And is your your guests want to say anything? <laughs> Always has a lot to say. <laughs> um, all right, so one more thing I'll bring, and then we'll vote, and then I'll just let you say hello. Um, well, why don't you say hello now anyway? It's kind of awkward. <laughs> yeah. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, as I said, my name is David Kurtek, uh, and it's such a pleasure uh, to be here and an honor to be uh, part of your guys' community now um, as your aquatic supervisor. Uh, I. As they said, I've, I've been in the game yeah. since I was 15 years old. I've been a swimmer since I was five years old. So uh, I know the ins and outs pretty well. And I even have this little guy doing <laughs> swimming as well. He started at three months. So uh, I'm very excited to be here. As I said, I'm very excited to be a part of the community. And I promise I won't let you guys down. And uh, I'm very excited to uh, make the aquatics here uh, even better than it already is. Awesome. All right, so thank you, sir. Um, and uh, one more note I want to make before we vote is we are participating again in the West Nile Virus Prevention Program, which means free mosquito spray and free mosquito dunks is what we call them. They can go into any place where there's standing water, retention and detention ponds. Um, and they are free. Bill, when will they be available? Are they available now? Aaron, Bill? Yes. Yeah, the dunks are in. Uh, mosquito spray should be coming in the next uh, week or so. We'll have the, thank you, we'll have the mosquito, at mo, pretty much all of our public events, the movies and concert series on the Hill, um, we always usually have it out there, a lot of our, all our runs and things, we'll have it for you to grab, but also you can come here to the office between 8.30 and 4.30 Monday to Friday and pick it up right in the hallway uh, between the building department and public services. All right, um, any other comments, questions on the consent agenda? Any member of the public want to give comment on tonight's consent agenda? Any of the items, seeing no one come forward, we get a roll call vote, please. Pfeiffer? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dorimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. All right. That motion passes 7 0. Congratulations. <laughs> I will tell you that, um, you know, we're doing a lot of hiring. We're doing a lot of um, bring, growing our team. As you know, in the last two meetings, we brought in five firefighters. Um, and 
now that we have the community center um, still operating as a club right now, um, it's really fun to see, see the team grow and we are absolutely attracting the best talent uh, in, in the region. So kudos to Deanna, our HR director, uh, and, and team and Aaron uh, for, for all the work they're doing. But thank you and thanks to Chief for um, kind of giving us a new way to recruit firefighters and, and igniting some interest in our community. All right, um, moving on to tonight's pending business, we have three items. The first item is item 10A, Villages at Orion, amendment to the MARSA consent judgment. As you are all aware, I see you, Matt. Let me just um, tee this off and then I'll come to you. Uh, the applicant is present tonight. Um, I know many of you are here to, to address the board on this topic. Uh, the applicant uh, asked, la based on the, the, the feedback that was received in mass uh, from residents, the applicant asked for the opportunity to meet with the church, and they believe they did that. I did speak with Father Jim Keene this week. Uh, he also sent an email to our board this afternoon, um, kind of uh, memorializing that that meeting did take place. Um, so uh, at the advice of our township attorneys at the last meeting, the recommendation was to not take any action to the dismay of many in the crowd uh, and in the community, um, but um, remembering that it's our fiduciary responsibility to protect the interest of the township. And when our attorney gives us advice, um, I have learned, I'm not an attorney, that we should always take it. Um, and that is in, in order to protect the interest of the township. So that motion passed last meeting, but we did schedule them to come back tonight. They are here. Um, I don't know uh, what might change, but I think what we'll do is, um, is it appropriate? I think we'll start with um, a motion and then give them an opportunity. That's what we would typically do. Um, so Matt, you had your hand up. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Supervisor. So having reviewed all the materials submitted by the applicant and the applicant's consultants, the related planning commission's review comments public hearing minutes, notes and files, materials of PC 2332, the reviews and materials submitted by the township's consultants, including the township planning department, township planning site plan review, engineer, fire marshal, and the county water commissioner, having heard the applicant's presentation and the public's comments, letters, and input. I move to deny the Cavalier Companies and the Villages of Orient request to amend the November 6, 2020 MARSA consent judgment and site plan application received August 9, 2023 as amended based on the entire record and board comments, including the applicant's failure to show good cause for amendment of a valid and agreed upon consent judgment, the site plan's deviations from the agreed, agreed upon use and terms of the consent judgment and or the lack of consistency with the standards, criteria, and level of impact set forth in the township's zoning and related ordinances. Support. Support. May I have that, please? Moved by Pfeiffer, and I heard Flood, I think, first on support, but it seemed like there was multiple supports. Um, I will tell you, um, we did let the applicant know uh, through our attorney, Mr. Kelly, that um, we did receive extensive public comment at the last meeting, and they could review that um, on on our um, on the website through the recorded uh, meeting. So I, I believe they may have done that. Uh, Mr. Kelly, you did. I think were you trying to signal to get my attention? Okay. All right. So we typically have a motion support before we discuss. I know the applicants here, and they have the opportunity to to speak to the board. So at this time. Before I turn it over to the board comment or further public comment, I will um, turn it over to Mr. Butler, who is here, I believe, on behalf of the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Barmet. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, oh, do you need me to? Uh, are you showing something? Yes. Okay. My presentation. How about that. So we're here tonight um, requesting an uh, amendment to the existing consent judgment. Our development team consists of Lorian uh, Lapeer Development LLC, um, PEA Group as the architect, landscape architect, and civil engineer. Stucky Vitali is the architect for the project, and the attorney for the project is Dykema. The site is comprised of 13.18 acres. Um, it is located on the west side of Lapeer Road, uh, north of Indian Wood. Subject parcel is 
under a consent agreement, and it's zoned CJ, which is a special circumstances, which is uh, an agreement that was established on November 6, 2000. This agreement established the parcel to be zoned as office professional. Subject parcel is adjacent to um, OP zoning on the north, Grace Premier, and on the south, um, the St. Joe's Catholic Church, and the west is zoned R1. Parcel has some developmental challenges, um, has some unique conditions, um, really, that limit the potential for the development. Um, the parcel has a significant amount of topography. Parcel is very irregularly shaped. Um, the parcel is encumbered by existing easements, an ingress egress easement and a gas main easement, which are for the benefit of the single family parcels to the west. Subject parcel is also encumbered by an access easement agreement with the chiropractic office. The parcel does not have an established gravity storm sewer outlet, and the subject parcel is impacted by off-site drainage um, that discharges from Grace and from MDOT. So with all these conditions, and if the RM zoning requirements are strictly in force, it would create a situation that would limit the economic viability of a residential development without, without any deviations from those requirements, such as setbacks, heights, or density. We are proposing a three building configuration here. Two of the buildings, building A and building B, are four rent apartments. The building to the north of Iroquois are two-story townhouses. Um, the plan includes a park area of approximately three acres. Um, it provides for a series of walkways and connectivity internally and externally to the pier road. The project um, will also improve Iroquois Drive. Currently, Iroquois is a gravel road. It will be hard surfaced. The target market for this are young professionals. Average rents of about $1,800 a month, and each apartment will have fitness and a business center. Kind of giving a proximity um, to existing buildings in the area. The apartment building, uh, apartment A, is about 193 feet from St. Joe's, 228 and 340 feet from the adjacent residential. Building apartment B is about 200 feet from an adjacent residential to the west. And then the townhouses are about 138 feet. This is the uh, elevations of the apartment building. This is building A. This is the one closest to St. Joe's. Um, the building is 36 feet, 10 inches up to the parapet height. This is the apartment building, building B, which is south of Iroquois. Again, same type of material, same type of architecture, 36 feet, 10 inches to the parapet. And then finally, the townhouse, um, these are 24 feet. We did prepare a pseudo landscape plan for the project. Um, this plan shows the plantings we're putting in. Um, point of note is, you know, this site being 13 some odd acres, it has about seven acres of green space, which is including the three acre park. So the percentage of green space and open space is well over 60%. We took the time to do a section of the apartments and the townhouses. This is the Southerly uh, apartment. This is the apartment south of Iroquois. Again, we're 200 feet away. And then the townhouses. We also looked at what would be developed here if it were office. So we went and did a plan to show what an office configuration would, would, like, would look like under the consent agreement. On the south side, we came up with an office building, two-story office building, about 36,000 square feet. Um, it would be 96 feet from St. Joe's, 260, 240 feet from the adjacent residential. Office building B, again, two stories, 30,000 square feet, about 132 feet from the adjacent residential to the west. And then office building C, 25,000 square feet, 97 feet. This is just a summary of that table and of what could be developed under the office 
and developed under the apartment. Um, see the height differential of about six feet 11 for a office building A in the apartments, two story versus three story, depicting the setbacks um, from St. Joe's and the residential for both the apartment and the office building for A, B, and C. We did a trip generation analysis was prepared by our traffic consultant. Um, they looked at what it would be the traffic generated um, under peak hour conditions and for a daily, weekly uh, trip generation. Um, the top two lines pick out you know, the AM and PM, the total day trips for a multifamily development that we're proposing, about 1,044 trips. Office building, 91,000 square feet, that would generate about 1,432 trips. So there's a reduction in about 37% between the two developments. Benefits of the project, provides a mixture of housing that's needed in the community, provides larger setbacks from the nearby homes than would be permitted by the office use, provides three acres of recreational space, provides connectivity through the development by internal and external pathways, and the proximity of the development to the downtown will provide for additional residents that will utilize the retail, the restaurants, and, and the services. <coughs> During the public hearing, um, you know, we heard many, many comments. Um, these are some of the highlight ones. Uh, compatibility with the adjacent residents to the west. You know, the proposed residential will have less impact on the office, as an office development would. The proposed multifamily development will provide a transitional zoning between the office and the single family, uh, which is a basic land planning principle. And the existing zoning change, the zoning change from office to multifamily would be a down zoning. The traffic, I think we pointed out in that uh, chart that we provided, that it would be a reduction compared to office to multifamily. Uh, the building height, um, pursuant to the uh, zoning ordinance for multifamily, 35 feet is permitted, we're at 36 feet 11 inches, uh, which is about a foot 11 ab above the ordinance. Um, the height allows for us to have nine foot ceilings in those apartments, which is pretty common today in multifamily. Um, number of stories, um, there are a few projects within the township, apartment projects that are three stories, uh, one being Orient Cove and the other <coughs> Pomeroy Senior Living. We did prepare a couple of exhibits showing those, um, Pomeroy on the left. 160 units, about 12.7 units per acre. And then Orion Cove, a three-story, total about 241 units, and that's about 10 units per acre. In conclusion, subject parcel has been zoned OP since 2000. Only one development project has been brought forward um, for site plan approval. The Rose, re uh, Rose residential use is consistent with the re uh, Re, excuse me, residential and non-residential uses in the surrounding properties along the Lapeer Road corridor and serves as an appropriate transition from Lapeer Road to the single family to the west. The proposed development is in scale and is compatible with the adjacent residential uses. There's an existing, there are existing site conditions that create challenges that limit the development potential of the subject parcel. The proposed project will provide economically obtainable Newer housing opportunities not currently found within the township, and the project will provide a dedicated park area of approximately three acres for recreational uses. One thing I would like to point out, when this project was before you last year, I think there were 246 units. We're proposing 122 units. One other item I do want to, there was a concern that came up related to the proximity of St. Joe's. Um, we took the opportunity to create a graphic kind of showing any potential sight line that would be from these buildings to the playground area. And the building, the corner of the building blocks it. It's 975 feet away and there's a very severe amount of topography. That playground sits down low. So this is just a graphic. Showing that there is vegetation along the common property line that would block that, any sort of view. That. 
Thank you. I'm Alan Green. I'm counsel. I would have been the one that would be assisting in drafting any amendment to the consent judgment. I have just a few things to add. And then we have a, a representative of the property owner who will also just speak for a minute. So we'll be done pretty quickly. I, I understand where you're going and in the resolution. I do want to make a couple comments. So the consent judgment was done in 2000, 24 years ago. The bank has owned the property for 15 years. Um, obviously, none, neither of us, the current owner of the property or the proposed developer, was involved in the consent judgment. So we don't have any history or background in, with respect to that. Uh, we don't even have a site plan. The consent judgment that we have references a site plan that was attached. I don't think anybody's been able to, to find what the site plan was when the consent judgment was even approved. But in any case, um, it's been 24 years, and um, there's been... Uh, very little activity in trying to figure out a use for this property. Um, we had a good, what I thought, forthright meeting with uh, uh, St. Joe Parish officials. Uh, they were, they raised concerns about traffic and security. Uh, we gave them a copy of the traffic report that showed virtually no traffic generated by, by this development, particularly in relationship to a business development. Uh, we also talked about security and the proximity of the building. There's only one building. These buildings aren't interconnected, so there's only even one building uh, that's in, in proximity to the church, and the church itself is a fairly large structure, and it blocks any view to the school or the playground facilities. There are routinely everywhere in our communities uh, schools and religious institutions located adjacent to multifamily. Uh, it's a fairly common occurrence. In fact, I just want to point out in your zoning ordinance, it is the uh, school facilities and the religious institutions that are considered special land uses. So if this were zoned single family or zoned RM, multifamily, those uses would be permitted as a matter of right. It would be the school or the religious institution that would be a special use. And it says so in the zoning ordinance because, quote, in order to reduce the potential nuisance in neighboring property owners if a place of worship is indicated in a residential district. As I, as I told the Planning Commission, I'm personally involved right now in representing a parochial school trying to get approval to operate. And it is often the opposite. Um, uh, the residential areas are always concerned about new schools coming in because of the large amount of traffic that schools generate, because of the queuing for uh, traffic in and out at the beginning and end of the school day, because of kids trespassing on their property. So it's sort of ironic a little bit in, in, in what I do in my practice is that, is that the, we have a situation where uh, a use that would be permitted as of right is, is being looked at as having negative impacts on schools and religious institutions that are traditionally located in such an area as a special land use. The last thing I just want to point out, and I'm not I'm sure we brought it up at some point, is that you know, I reviewed the master plan. And what we're proposing is fully consistent with uh, numerous provisions of your master plan. I, I wrote down a few of them. The master plan discusses the need for housing, particularly entry level housing and empty nester housing. Uh, and it emphasizes affordability. The plan notes that 52% of the township residents are expected to, to move or leave or transition in the next five years. That's fairly typical because we're a very mobile society and your plan recognizes that. It also said, based upon interviews, that 72% of your residents characterize the shopping opportunities that are convenient to them, that is either walkable or bikeable, are poor or fair, with the larger percentage being younger people that, that have the criticism. The concept of a 15-minute neighborhood is in your master plan, which is a very modern concept. That is, let's locate housing in close proximity to our village and city centers. That, that, that is sustainability. That is less driving, less traffic, um, less pollution. The plan also discuss, your plan discuss shifting demographics in the community and the so-called missing middle housing. And the plan states that, quote, proximity and walkability to retail uses and other services is a primary factor in choosing a location for a future home, close quote. And the plan also recognizes that 
PUDs are used typically for properties that are of, you know, have unique features and, and different shapes like this property. So although I understand your planning consultant compared this project to the basic standards of a RM2 zoning, nowadays everybody's using PUDs because the, the traditional zoning classifications are not sufficient to cover that. And your master plan, your master plan says that. And uh, your master plan says that the current RM2 zoning was structured to permit traditional garden apartment units. And it's an older designation, it's really not applicable to today's housing designs, and it recommends that the, the township look at its RM2 zoning to update it. So these are, all, these are all things in your master plan that we believe this project is consistent with. It's, it's surrounded by a variety of different land use and zoning classifications. It's in close proximity to the village. It's an easy walk or bike to the village. It'll provide it's not that big of a project, but it would provide additional residents and customers to village businesses. And I think most telling, and I found this a little bit, a little bit unusual, is that if you look at, you have a residential density plan in your master plan, and identifies this property as, quote, special circumstances. And then you have your future land use map in your master plan, which also designates the property as special circumstances. I might have missed it, and, uh, and your attorney could probably tell me that, but I didn't see a definition of special circumstances. What, is, what does that mean? It didn't identify the property as future office or medical office. I think by the time your master plan was last redone, this property had been sitting out there for a long time for no use, and I think that the township was giving itself the most flexibility. That is, we don't really know, you know what's going to happen with this property, so we're not really designating it for anything in particular. So, you know, I understand where you're going, but I, we want to say that we've, we've really tried hard in good faith to address all the comments that were raised by the community. We wanted to be good neighbors. Uh, we think that everything we're doing is consistent with your zoning ordinance and your master plan. And uh, we hope to achieve something, but probably not. We have one, one last person who's going to speak for just a minute so you can hear from a representative of the project owner of the bank. Um, Hello, my name is Jack Ulrich, and with Cot Sangsters Boisaki, we represent Waterford Bank. Um, as Alan pointed out, Waterford, then Clarkston State Bank, a community bank, received the property in 2009. I think it's important to note that we did not buy this property on spec. It was surrendered to us by the estate of a debtor. We, were, we had no intention of going into any sort of land development. We've owned this property since 2009. Frankly, we've been trapped in this property for 2009. We've had multiple offers, all of which have fallen through because of difficulties raised by its circumstances, by its shape and where it is located. We have worked with the city or the, the township, and the supervisor and, his, and, and, and your staff to try to proactively address these measures. And unlike other businesses, we are strictly regulated. Uh, we have had multiple appraisals, which you normally don't do when you have a piece of property for 15 years. You have multiple appraisals, site assessments, engineering assessments, and just recently we took a $1.15 million write down to the asset as a result of banking regulations. We would like to work with the city. We would Another way to go about doing this is property values in this township and in northern Oakland County have increased dramatically since 2009. The value of this piece of property has only gone down because it is now known in the developer community that we will not be allowed to develop this land. And while I too would enjoy having green space next to my house that I don't have to pay for, I strongly recommend that the township approve our development. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, I, uh, we're not gonna do a back and forth with the residents. I think most of you know how this works. Um, I know um, 
that uh, we'll first, I guess, see if the board has questions that they can ask of the applicant. If there aren't any, then we'll open it up to public comment, then board deliberation. Uh, Matt, go ahead. I, I just um, want to make one correction to my motion. I uh, stated that it was 2020, November 6, 2020, MARSA judgment. It was actually November 6, 2000. That was just a misspeak. Okay. Are you um, amending your motion, sir? Amending my motion. I will amend my second. Okay, so Thank you. just correcting the, the date of the, of the original consent judgment. All right, um, are there any questions from board members about, um, we'll go Penny, Mike, Brian. Penny? So we have quite a few letters that have been received. We told the residents that we would read these into the record. Julia has agreed to read them for me. My voice isn't as strong as it normally is. We also received 48 um, emails from residents that had concerns, and those were read into the record on April 15th. And, I, and I, just a point of order, I, I talked to the attorney about this. We have not historically read. Um, we receive and file them. We can put them in the minutes, but we haven't read them like we did last. That was, a, that was different than what we've done in the 12 years I've been here. Dan, do we have to read them, or can we just note that we received them and put them in the minutes? Right. We don't have to read them. We just want to give the letter. Okay. So we will, let's, let's do that for tonight. Point of order. Yep. Uh, I'll address this procedural to the attorney. Uh, I sit on the Zoning Board of Appeals as representative, and also Jim's on the Planning Commission. What our normal practice there is, when we have received a lot of information like that, we would like for the record the name of the person who sent the letter, their address, and either yay or nay. It's that simple. That way it gets entered in the record without to read the whole verbatim. Is that, is that uh, possible? Thank you. And we told the people we would. But we don't have to do it verbatim. We just do their name. Yeah, I mean, it, this is the first that case in 12 years we've ever done that, that I've been here. And so it I just, was so appropriate that the people knew that we were going to honor what they were asking us to do. I mean, I, I'm not saying we don't. We still, it's still in the record. It's, we're still, the board members have received all those emails, correct, board members? So if it's, I think, I think I'll tell you, for me, and my decision, we're certainly considering all of those things. We've just... What we did at the last meeting, we've never we've never done at this board. So that's why I asked Dan ahead of time, is that something we need to do? Um, certainly. Um, I'd like to read their names. Perfect. Julia will. Sure. Okay. Uh, Doris Fanarzio is no. Matthew Hollis was also no. Kelly Scara, also no. Uh, Maureen Caro, also a no. Jill Recker, also a no. John Parker, no. Sarah C, no. Nancy Moss, no. Lauren Moss, no. Joe Zimkley, no. Susie Fanzi, no. Uh, Dr. Brett and Mary Brett, no. Kathy Manis, no. Denise Murray, <coughs> no. Mike Majaskic, no. Ashley Burkhart, no. Jane Layton, no. Michelle Gothforth, no. Michael Evola, no. Liz Smith, no. Anaya Rivers, no. Alexa Elias, no. Lisa and Brandon LaCouche, no. Sarah Jabalowski, no. And Tanya Musick, no. Thank you, Julia. Uh, Mr. Bernie? Oh, a question for you, Dan. Um, and this is in regards to the actual motion. So there's a lot of words in that motion. I, I mean, I heard deny and then a lot of words. So I just want to make sure that everyone here is clear what exactly that motion means. Okay. Mike? 
turn them up. You better make me Dan just holler into it. <laughs> or, or be like Joanne. There you go. Uh, okay, did that answer your question, Brian? Yeah. Mike? Uh, let, let's get if, let's make this questions, not not deliberating yet. Um, if there are questions for the developer, then I'm gonna open it up to any additional public comment, then we'll bring it up to board deliberation like we normally do. Any questions for the the, the, the applicant of the bank. Do I have questions for the applicant? Yes. No. Okay. Any? All right. We're going to open it up to public comment. I like a board comment before they open to the public on, on the motion. Okay. Well, typically we'll do, we'll take the public comment and then we'll bring it back to the board. Usually that's what we do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, so knowing that, um, I know many of you have been here before and we're glad you're here um, and we've received obviously lots of correspondence before the last meeting and this meeting. Um, if, you, if anyone has public comment um, that's something new or you'd like to add, please come forward. Keep those comments to about three minutes, address them to me, the chair. We won't have a back and forth. If there are specific questions, we'll try to, I'll try to write them down and we'll ask the developer to answer them. Um, and again, uh, also noting that the, um, Motion right now is to uh, to, de to deny um, the amendment, which I believe the majority of the folks here uh, that will be speaking are in favor of. All right, so go ahead and name an address for the record, and I'll give you about uh, three minutes, please. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mary Brett, 857 North Lapeer Road. We ask you vote no on amending the MARSA consent judgment. This is not good for the township. This is leapfrog and overdevelopment of the area. Lake Orion, Orion Township, Oxford Township on Lapeer Road have many approved developments. Our infrastructure cannot support. Oxford's current planning commission has yet another large development being considered. Silverado Custom Homes. That'll be another 350 vehicles. Currently approved developments are around 1,400 extra vehicles. This proposed development would be probably another 300 to 350 vehicles. Our roads cannot support this large increase all at once. With the ones in Orion Township, it's around 1,700. The villages, the village of Lake Orion, 300 vehicles, and Oxford Township, 800 vehicles. Without this development, it would be over 2,500 vehicles already impacting Lapeer Road and the infrastructure. Why has the developer not modified the drawings since last September to meet township requirements? The Board of Trustees are concerned of being sued. What grounds? He does not meet the township requirements, period. The Planning Commission was accurate and thoughtful at the March meeting. We ask that you follow the recommendation of the PC. There are too many strong deviations. This is not a tasteful transition. This is not in line with the master plan or the neighborhood, and it's not in compliance with ordinances, variances, setbacks, density, impact to all neighbors, and stormwater. There are 14 deficiencies. This needs to be in a rational manner. What about the children in the area, St. Joseph Church and School, the bus stops? This is not the right time or the right place for this size development. These strong deviations cannot be ignored. The Board of Trustees stated if the township is sued, it could be around $75,000. That's a lot of money, and good stewardship of tax dollars is important. However, that is a tiny percentage of the total annual budget of $45 million in total revenues and $9 million budgeted to the general fund. That is .0083 of the $9 million. Allowing de developers to do whatever they want does not serve the citizens of this township. In reviewing the OP Article 9 Office and Professional District, it thoughtfully states regarding development when located a considerable distance from residential properties, but also I didn't see distances on how far they are from the Brett chiropractic or the vet. OP considers and prohibits business activities to generate heavy traffic or constant visits of general public. OP is designed to complement the district. It's important to recognize what is permitted by right, special use, and special use within the Lapeer Road Overlay District located south of Lake Orion in OP definition. There are also a lot of restrictions near residential use. With the approved development along Lapeer Road, OP will be needed and necessary. Key is that Article 35 states, which will not create adverse impacts to surrounding uses. Thank you, Mrs. Brad. If you could kind of wrap your comments, please. Yes. And at this time, my next portion I will be reading for Dr. Mark Brad. 
Jean Marceau wanted her property to be office professional on Lapeer Road to develop a dental office for a friend. Unfortunately, the dentist passed away after this consent judgment. Jean Marsa lived in the neighborhood, knew her neighbors, was part of neighborhood picnics and the SDA church next door. She thoughtfully considered her neighbors and the nature of the area. She was not proposing massive development beyond township requirements for development. Upon review of the Marsa consent judgment, these things should be noticed, noted. Page two and three, Jean Marsa owned the property. The developer does not. Pages two and three, the Marsa consent judgment is binding on all successors, successors and transferees. Number nine, cannot use subject property in any other manner. manner. Judgment takes precedence. Pages four and five, number 11, northeast for conservation and buffer purposes, conservation easement, no building, no disturbance. Conservation area shall be forever reserved and preserved in its natural condition for open space and buffer. Page 18, number 18. Township may impose additional reasonable requirements and regulations deemed necessary or appropriate by the township to achieve compatibility with area properties or to achieve other specific objectives designed to protect public health, safety, and welfare. Prior to this consent judgment, single family and OP, all existing uses on the west side of Lapeer Road in the area of the parcel are office or institutional in nature. The trend of development in the immediate area precludes residential use of this property and rezoning to a classification with actual existing uses in the immediate area. There is a page, Plaintiff's Exhibit D, going to medium density from single family. The consent judgment is consistent with the township master plan. South end was to be developed. This property is in the north end. The OP zoning by the consent judgment and what was prior to the CJ was low density to possibly medium density. The developer is proposing high density, which doesn't fit with this property or the development that is already approved along Lapeer Road. Please vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Brett. Hello, my name is Catherine Kennedy. I live in Rochester in Lake Orion. And I actually was going to read some of the same sections, the consent agreement that I'm surprised the attorney did not get, which has the site plan, very easy to find. And the reason this can't be developed, by the way, a conservation easement in the following terms shall be deemed to be imposed and established on and over such areas of subject property depicted for conservation and buffer purposes, and the use of subject property shall be subject to this conservation easement. The reason the township wants to develop is they want to cha charge taxes. We should simply, if it's not a buildable site, it's wetlands, first of all. The township, I believe, is in extreme violation of part 303 of Act 451, Wetlands Protection. Uh, you're not supposed to deposit or permit placing a fill material in a wetland. There's a lot of wetlands on this parcel. You're not allowed to dredge, remove, or permit it. You're not allowed to construct, operate, or maintain any use or development in the wetland or drain surface water from a wetland. And anything connected to or located with a thousand feet of one of the Great Lakes or Lake St. Clair, connected to or located within 500 feet of an inland lake, which to me means the entire Orient Village downtown um, projects are disqualified, uh, not connected in anything, in anything, any of these acreages that are, have wetland provisions in the parcels that are more than five acres are required to have a proper official state permit allowing you to fill them at all. So any of these parcels, we've been so overdeveloped in Orion Township, and it's all the globalist agenda that was created in the Master plan, you're correct. They changed the master plan in 2020, but only three citizens were allowed to participate in the discussions in 2020 to make all those changes. Out of the entire 38,000 citizens, only three were allowed to participate. And in fact, it looks more like the master plan was written for the World Economic Forum globalists because the 15-minute cities, the uh, high-density housing, all these things 
are in the World Economic Forum agenda, where our county gave three million of our tax dollars to welcome the globalists to take over our region. So not only do I believe our township is an adamant violation all up and down to Lapeer Road, all up and down Clarkston on the lakefront of the Wetlands Protection Acts, which are state law, and although I know the township has an ordinance, you keep waving it and going around it. You can't waive a state law. The township doesn't get to pick higher than the state. Your comments, Ms. Kennedy. And the other thing, the Federal Migratory Birds Act. I actually believe we are placing so many of our species of birds at risk with all the overdevelopment here in Orion Township and throughout Oakland County. I have a huge list of it. Thank That's you. actually an international treaty that involves USA, Canada, Mexico, and Russia. So I believe we're actually in violation of both of those. So I'm surprised that our attorneys hadn't taken the time to get the settlement agreement to know it's illegal. Thank you. an opportunity to speak to us as well. Thank you. Good evening. You know me, Eugenia McDaniel, 11180 Iroquois. I strongly urge you to not approve the changing zoning to allow the construction of a huge multifamily complex in our neighborhood. And before I get to my little speech, I'm going to talk just a second about walking into the village or taking your bike. Unless you build a bridge so people can cross over Lapeer Road because of all that traffic, it makes no sense that that's going to somehow get people over there by foot or by bike. We used to do it. We used to walk uh, it, when it was CJ's to breakfast. It's, you have to cross that road. In the morning, you can't do that safely. You can't get your bike over there. Yes, you can go north, and you can go up to DK and get donuts. That's easy enough, but you can't go south to the village. Anyway, OK. Tonight, I just want to ask a few questions. I don't expect any answers. How many of you board members have walked along the property we're discussing tonight? Have you walked around our yards or down to the lake? Have you, have you imagined how a three-story multifamily dwellings will change the character of that community? Have you seen how close the buildings and dumpsters will be to the existing homes? Have you seen how close the apartments will be to the neighboring school? Nowhere else in Orion Township are multifamily buildings so close to a school. Why allow them to be built right next to St. Joe's church and school? We know all too well that school tragedies do happen and they can happen in our own backyards. Does Orion Township have the emergency services to support the huge influx of people already uh, expected with the current development projects? If built, are you okay with more than 100 plus cars on either side of the development having only one way in and out on a short road that will not be able to support the expected traffic? There's only one way in and out for each building. Previously, I mentioned the problems of the possible consequences of so many cars on a short road on a short road and the bus stop, cold weather, ice, kids, snowmen, all that kind of stuff. And add to that, the if there is any construction on Lapeer Road and, the given and, the, and the, with given the traffic issues, that's a possibility, they can block access from our road, which is Iroqu or Iroquois, to Lapeer Road, and you can't get out. And it's happened. We've come home, and we were not able to get to our house. My husband dropped me off down the road. I walked. He went and parked probably by Kroger. Good thing nobody had an emergency like an, an ambulance had to get in. Are the taxes that would be gained by the township where living is a vacation more important than conserving green spaces, wetlands, wildlife, and more importantly, the safety and security of children and members of the entire Orion community? The proposed project, which includes two three-story buildings, will not improve the character or environment of Orion Township and will certainly not enhance the neighborhood or the community. Right now, it is an area of nice older homes and it's full of trees, woodland animals, and some wetlands. Construction will not uh, improve that. One last thing. My guess, and I believe it's a good guess, is that if you pulled every single resident in Orion Township, and that's, uh, is that an overwhelming majority would agree that this development is not needed, would not benefit the com or improve the, improve the community, and certainly would not foster the idea that living in the, is a vacation in Orion Township. Please do the right thing for the community and the township and vote no. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. 
Good evening, my name is Joseph McDaniel. My wife, Eugenia, and I have lived at 180 Iroquois Drive since 2013, drawn by the promise that living here is a vacation. I just want to repeat what I said the last time I was here, that the Township's 2022 Master Plan states, Korean Township, where living is a vacation, seeks to guide growth in a rational manner, striving to avoid patterns of leapfrog development. The desired outcome is to prevent overcrowding, protecting critical open space and natural resources, preserving community character, and minimizing traffic congestion. The two ladies before me spoke very well to that, as we have at all the previous meetings. The villages of Orion will cause overcrowding. It will destroy open space and natural resources to include wetlands. <clears throat> it will destroy the community character and increase traffic congestion. Their study was done in June. As it was pointed out at the last meeting, imagine it's in January and you have how many kids, 100 kids, waiting for a school bus and nowhere to shelter unless it's in their parents' cars and it's a one-tenth of a mile road. There's just no room there for those kinds of cars to wait. At that September 2023 Planning Commission meeting, the site plan review noted several violations of township ordinances. I, I think it was around 14 of them. So the developer was given until March 2024 to redo the plans to comply with township ordinances. But at the March Planning Commission meeting, the developer hadn't done so. So five of the six Planning Commission members, to include Ms. Urbanowski, spoke at length in negative tones or language about what they had brought to the Planning Commission meeting. Because the Planning Commission has two options, they can postpone a decision or they can forward it to the board. This was the second time they forwarded it to you board members to make a decision. <clears throat> On April 15th, when the developer was supposed to come and address you, they asked two hours before the meeting to be removed from the agenda. No reason given. Well, they obviously spent the last three weeks preparing their information, their slides and everything else going over the master plan with a fine tooth comb and bringing out the big guns so that they come in here and overwhelm you with their firepower. The consent judgment, as Ms. Brett mentioned, specifies that this subject property is zoned off as professional one and it cannot be developed or used in any other manner. That consent judgment notes that this property is subject to a conservation easement and shall be forever reserved and preserved in its natural condition as open space and buffer. You know, given the unusual shape of the property, which I grant is a problem for a developer, and the original intent to build a dentist office, as well as all the current ordinances that govern office professional, there are only gonna be limited types of offices that could be allowed. <clears throat> I believe it's number 78 in the zoning regulations specifies that certain types of buildings have to be several hundred feet to maybe over a thousand feet from residential areas, churches, and schools. So I think that's gonna overrule anything to, they wanna build. This apartment complex is unnecessary, unwanted, and in conflict with the consent judgment and the township master plan, despite what the team over here says. Thank you for your comment, sir. Okay. And I think, I mean, we heard a lot, that's, if you're saying stuff that you said last meeting, we, we were all here and we, I, I can speak for myself, but I have extensive notes, so. And we have the, the letters that many of you submitted as well. So come on forward, please, thank you. Hi, uh, yes, I was at the last meeting, and I'll try not to be redundant. Um, I'm Reagan Vrakov, I'm from Oxford, Michigan, and I work at St. Joe's School. I have three children that go to St. Joe's School, and some real power pillars have appeared in the room tonight. These men have a lot of pressure on them. I, I got a chance to co-develop some property, 98 acres in Oxford, so I'm a little familiar with what you guys are doing right now. Anyhow, they've already invested a great deal into that site plan, the landscape architects, the traffic consultants, creating hypotheticals for our entertainment, and these wonderful attorneys are surely high paid, I, I would imagine over 400 an hour, but I'm not sure. Ma'am, <sighs> This time, the rules that we, you oh, have tell to me. to me, you can't. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't be picking on. I'm a, I'm a lunch staff, so I work at the school. Again, I'm there to hopefully pr help protect some of the children that are there. There's 450 of them, and 900, 190 feet from St. Joe's or 96 feet from St. Joe's is too close. And saying that the church blocks the view of the school is that the assurance for our children to be safe? None of these men are going to keep our 
kids protected, the kids, the men that are going to keep our kids protected are up there. And if the developers win, it surely has fancier and higher paid attorneys in expensive suits that can outfox townships. But it would be a sad day for the United States of America when opportunistic developers with deep pockets have more power over the community than the elected government officials that we depend upon. I hope you will honor the oath that you've taken and listen to your constituents in the room. They are clear. Please do the right thing here and vote no on this. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, Rosie Ward. I'm totally against this program that they want to build these condos. I have been in my home on Indian, I'm sorry, Rosie Ward, Indianwood Road. I have been in my home on Indianwood Road for 55 years. I've been in the township for 80, 67 years. At one time, if I wanted to go in town, I knew that I had to be on up M24 by 3 o'clock. Now, I better not be on M24 past 1 30 because of all the traffic coming up. I am totally against it. We don't, I know that Oxford is planning on building 180 to 200 condos up that way soon. Also, we have other development plans going out from the pier. All that traffic, will, not all of it, but a lot of the traffic will be going from 24. Um, another thing is, somebody, I go to the post office because I have a post office box. That I'm taking my life in my hands pulling out of that post office right now. I have to be very careful. I can hardly go across. If I want to go in to town once I leave the post office, I have to keep going down until I get back over to my other road. The gentleman talked about uh, people walking and biking to get across in the pier road. If I remember correctly, there is no safety pass on that side at all. So it's not safe at all. I hope you say no to this project. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ward. Good evening. Denise Murray. Oh, my emails. <laughs> 400 Manitou Lane. First of all, I really like to thank you for your good judgment because that's what this is about. You as our elected officials making good judgments and good calls. I'd like to point out the site view that they're showing is not necessarily accurate. That back row there where the cars are at, there's a, there's a field there at the church and that's often used by children. Uh, the front of the church is often used. I was looking at, and child, children's safety is very important to me. I was looking at the FBI and Secret Service um, reviews of shootings, and they were trying to um, do a profile of what a typical shooter or predator would be. And they really couldn't find a typical predator because we have no control over mental health or distribution of guns. But what they did find is mass shootings, predators, they, they first start by observing. They're enticed. Then they start to fantasize. These things are planned one to six months in advance. A high rise or three story building with access to the roof provides a lot of opportunity for somebody to observe. In Texas recently, and I did say this in my letter, you may not have read, anybody else may not have read it. In Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, they had 23, or in Texas, they had 23 gun incidents in their schools in 2023. Uh, Fort Worth approved the construction of a Studio 6 Extend Stay adjacent to Basswood Elementary School. Nobody told the school district. It was, um, it was a fluke. It didn't get through to them. And nobody was aware this was happening until the construction started. Parents, the school district, everyone was told they couldn't stop that development. Well, they stopped it. And Studio 6 stopped the development. This. Is this, this is so important, not just for Michigan, not just for Orion Township, but our laws have not kept up with 
what's going on in our schools and safety. In the last 24 years, talking about the ordinance, there have been almost like 1,400 school shootings in private and public schools. This, and we've had two down the street. If you live anywhere near Lapeer Road during, on November the 3rd, when, or 30th, you know what that was like. You heard those sirens. You didn't have to know what was going on. You knew evil was happening. After the Oxford shooting, my husband and I went to Mexico, thank you, and I met somebody from Columbine, and it was no longer if, it was when. So it's all of our responsibility as school safety, and thank you for your good judgment. Thank you. Good evening, Lisa LaCourcier, 945 Manitou Lane. Um, I've addressed the issue verbally in our past meetings and via email, and I just wanted to touch base on a couple items that I heard discussed tonight in addition to those that have been voiced by others. Um, as far as the items that were brought up regarding the master plan being included, it's wanting you know residential, multifamily residential and that sort of thing, those are addressed as we've discussed multiple times in the areas outlined in the master plan where they make sense, this not being one of them. So um, I understand that this is a unique piece of land, a difficult piece of land to develop, but I'm not sold on it not being able to be developed in a thoughtful way that helps our community. Um, I'm an engineer and a mom, and one thing that I thought of that would utilize the land as it is, we could capitalize on some of the unique topography, and also, given who we saw here tonight asking for a STEM facility, why not put a facility there or allow a development there that would do STEAM for children and utilize a large nature park that they could you know, be with the wildlife in there and have that conservation land laid out properly and in a thoughtful way that would allow the students at St. Joseph's, Lake Orion, and Oxford schools to better utilize that land. You don't know, use that difficulty as an opportunity. So I do think there are opportunities to make a better decision than rezoning or, or allowing an amendment like this to go through. And thank you for your time and for upholding you, the residents. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Sherry Grahowski, 900 Manitou Lane. And as you can see, I've written my notes in a color coloring book only because I came tonight thinking that I was just going to listen, okay? But whenever I started hearing the developer and the attorney and the bank saying all these things, I, I greatly appreciate everything that you have all said in regards to denying it. When they say the traffic study was done, that they did a traffic study, that's very true, but it was for a Tuesday and a Thursday. Have they ever been, a, why wouldn't you have done it for a Friday or a Monday? I mean, it was skewed, okay? And, and the exact same thing on the OP slide. I, you know, you can put a thousand things on there. You can, you can make up anything you want, okay? So I greatly appreciate everything that you are doing for us as Lake Orion. I, I mean, I've lived here 30 years, my husband and I have lived here, we've raised our children, we love this community and we wanna maintain it. I think what Lisa just said in regards to a better use of the land and not making it the three-story monster would be great. Our kids are so important to us, it's unbelievable. The wetlands there are phenomenal. The animals and birds, are amazing. I have this app on my phone and I, I, I live really close and I listen and there's more birds. I didn't even know of some of these birds, a the wobbler in this net. So it's phenomenal. I believe in you guys. I appreciate all you're doing for us and I just thank you. Thank you. Hi, Brian Russell, 805 North Lapeer. I uh, joined the uh, property of the church and the backside of this proposed uh, development. Uh, so let's see if I've got this right. Bank owns the land and a developer is asking for a spot zoning change to something multifamily residential which is not in the neighborhood. And they have submitted a site plan for more than a year that has been pointed out with over a dozen variances required, including Building size, building height, setbacks, fire safety, environmental, too much density. 
Hmm. This does not present a hardship to them, at least, to the developer. They know what they're getting into here. And if they, they have not proved that there's going to be confiscation of their rights of the property, that they are you know, going to be harmed in some way by this. They're asking for a zoning change, and then they need a lot more than that. It just is not appropriate at all. Shouldn't uh, a zoning change, they should have to, I, I was on the Zoning Board of Appeals in the village for five years, many of those as its chairman, so I've been trained in this. And they really need to show a hardship here. I think it can be developed as office professional. That's what all of the neighbors want. We think all think that it will negatively, negatively affect us and it will impact us. So, it also seems to me that the developer has not really shown a lot of good faith. They met with the neighbors a few years ago to say that they wanted to address our concerns and see if they could modify their plans to meet that, collected our email signatures, and never sent us anything. They, have, they were on the agenda last time. Didn't show at the last minute. I had to cancel an uh, out-of-town trip to D.C. But for business, but that's okay. That was so that they could hear what our objections are and plan for them. This is not really a good faith thing, and it's not a very big firm. Dykema is a big law firm, I'll say that, but these guys are not a powerhouse that can just bully us around. And uh, Chairman Barnett pointed out that he can't just think about the neighbors and say, not in my backyard, but all 40,000 of the people here. And I agree with what was said before. We pay taxes so we can have legal counsel to confront things like this so we're not just bullied by every developer that rolls into town and wants to break our laws. So I really encourage you to, uh, to support the motion to deny this. And I can say, as far as lawsuits go, if this passes, I'm going to sue because I bought that property knowing that it was office professional one. I'm fine with that. I have over five acres on a lake. There's going to be kids cutting through my yard while I'm at work. They're going to be taking out my boats. I'm going to have to call the sheriff. I spent over a million dollars building that house. And this is a real shock and a surprise. Thank you for your comments, Thanks. Mr. Russell. Hello, my name is Kevin Vernagas. I live at 200 Iroquois Drive, just west of the proposed development. I'll be sharing the, the road with uh, hundreds of cars there. Um, I did write you a letter. I didn't, didn't hear that read, but uh, Mr. Flood, I did get a response from you, so thank you for that. Um, so I won't spend a lot of time since I've documented most of uh, both my wife and, and ours uh, opposition to this development in that letter. But I want to give you a little background. We grew up in Lake Orion, graduated high school here, and left for 20 years. Uh, we came back 12 years ago, and we came back because we love Lake Orion. We love what it was when we grew up, we love what it is today, and we love what it can continue to be in the future. Okay, but some of that decision is in your hands tonight. And it strikes me when I look at that township symbol there behind us, you know, what it shows. It shows water and it shows trees. That is what's in my head when I think about Lake Orion. Okay. Um, now, when we move in, moved in 12 years ago, we knew there was high potential this would be developed at some point in time. But we also knew it was a consent judgment for office space, okay, office professional. And that was okay with us because that seems to be what should belong on M24, right, is the businesses. What we didn't expect was this large multi-density, you know, multi-family or high-density multi-family uh, unit that's being proposed that is not like anything on 24. It's not like the surrounding community of uh, single-family residential units behind it. It is its own unique monstrosity, and I think plain and simple, it doesn't belong there. So when I think about it, and, and who does it benefit, right? It doesn't benefit the directly affected residents like myself and, and these neighbors that are speaking out against it. It doesn't benefit the rest of the Lake Orion residents and Oxford residents that will deal with you know, increased traffic and the strained infrastructure we all face. They're here speaking against it. It doesn't benefit St. Joe's. They're here speaking against it. So who does it benefit? It benefits one group. It benefits these individuals here who are looking to maximize profit on that property. Okay, And that's okay to go ahead and make money, but I don't believe they have the best intent for Lake Orion in mind. You know, as was mentioned, they met with us several years ago and never came back. I deal with a lot of this stuff at work, and when there's opposition, what do you do? You bring everybody together and you talk it out. This has not happened. Last meeting I came to, they canceled two hours before to talk to St. Joe's Church. 
when there's been months, years of planning, and they thought two hours before the meeting, oh, maybe we should have done that? I don't believe they have the best interest of Lake Orion in mind. Okay, so you know who cares about Lake Orion? It's all of these residents that are here speaking out. You know who cares about Lake Orion? It's the St. Joe's members. It's you folks up there that serve tirelessly on the board, which I know is a thankless job. I thank you for what you do. I couldn't do it, okay? This is a lot for me just to come out and speak here in front of you. But I do urge you today to vote the right way, okay? Vote against the development. Otherwise, you might as well take that image right there, make it uh, traffic jams and three-story complexes. Please vote against it, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Joe Sandin, I live on Cedar Key, and I have three grandkids going to St. Joe's. Uh, <clears throat> last time I was here, a uh, police officer came uh, and got up and he expressed his concern for uh, the safety of the kids, and that's my primary concern with uh, my three grandkids. Um, I don't know if $1,800 a month and vegetation would provide the protection for the wrong kind of people for protecting the kids. Um, I mean, there was a lot of hypotheticals that were put up here. Let's put up a hypothetical. Let's say something happened. These gentlemen don't, I'm assuming they don't live in the community. Uh, we do, but let's, let's say a hypothetical that the policeman's right and something happens to one of the kids. You guys live here, these gentlemen don't. You know, it's, please do the right thing. That's. Anyone else? If anyone else wants to come up, just please come stand in line and or we'll, we'll wrap this up, bring it back up to the board. Tina Sanda, I live at 3004 Cedar Key. I just wanted to point out, they, it was brought up that it was a special case to have a school well, St. Joe's has been there for over 70 years. Anybody, any of the buildings that are around there came afterwards. It's like, it is not, we are not trying to open a school there. So anybody that moved in there knows what they were moving into. And I just think that that was silly for them to bring that up like we're, like we're the ones that have to try to accommodate the surrounding area. People who moved there knew it was there. Thank you. Margie Russell, 805 North Lapeer Road. I just wanted to point out that the photos that they have there are a little bit skewed. They, those trees are to the west of the property and St. Joe's is to the south and they've angled it but those deciduous trees would be cut down because the building would be there and there would be a clear sight, line of sight. The other thing I just wanted to mention is that the bank has owned the property for that long and they would have written it off a long time ago. <laughs> Plus, the value of it was never 1.5 million. It was much lower than that when we talked to the real estate agent uh, probably about three or four years ago with some people. So there's something funny about those numbers. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, we will close the public comment. Um, and I, I didn't see a lot of um, questions for the developer, but I don't know. Um, uh, before I bring it up to the board, was there anything, I'll give you the opportunity, anything you wanted to address based on the, the public comment or feedback uh, that you received um, before I turn it around to the board? I, I appreciate the opportunity, but no, I think we, uh, we obviously disagree with a lot of the comments, but uh, everybody has their right. It's America, so... Um, we would just appreciate you listening to all of us. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll bring it up here to the board. Uh, let me. Uh, there was a correction to the motion, um, and we'll wait a moment for Mr. Flood. He asked if he could be excused for a moment, so um, we'll do that. Chris, uh, can we recess just for five minutes? Um, okay. Thank take, you. Um, so it sounds like we're going to take a Quick break, it's 8.46, um, 8.51. Can we plan on reconvening, make it very, uh, or sooner if we're ready? Yep. We'll take a, a, a brief uh, recess.
Okay, we'll reconvene the uh, meeting of the Township Board of Trustees at 8.52 after a short commercial break. Um, thank you all for being here. And we're, we're at the point now where we're bringing it up for board discussion and deliberation. Um, I'll, I'll start down here and just work down the line. I'll, and that's what we'll do. We'll work down the line. If you have comments, go ahead and say them. And if not, we'll go to the next person. Mr. Bernie. We'll okay. Um, thank you. So... This is probably the easiest decision I've had to make in the seven plus, yeah, it's on, the seven plus years that I've been on the board. Um, typically, when these types of things come up, you hear both sides of the, the argument. You hear from people that are in for, people that are against. And these are people that live here in our community, the people that put us up here. In this case, not one person that lives in this community thinks this is a good idea. So there's no, there's no other question in my mind but to say no to this. It's very simple. The people that put us here have all said no. Every single one of them, every single person that's come to that podium, every single person that's wrote the 50 plus emails, the whole St. Joe's community, the neighbors that live back there have all said no. I've never seen this in seven plus years. Not one person has come up and said, you know what, I kind of think this is a good idea. So there's no other question in my mind than to say no. Thank you, Mr. Flood. No comments? Uh, so I get my, got tons of paper up here. Uh, first of all, before I had this opportunity to honor and privilege of being on this side of the dais throughout my life, and Will Hutchinson, we've sat at a lot of board meetings out in the audience, and, it, and those board meetings went well past midnight, so on. So oh, this is a long, drawn-out process. It's, it's like making sausage. This process started a year ago, almost a year ago exactly. It was back in May. I got all my notes right here. May 15th. Being in this position, and it's hard to do, and you learn this as you, be, as you take your continuing education courses, being a public servant, it's a lot different than being in a private sector. Laws, everything, we have to follow those. You have to hear both sides, and you have to give each side the opportunity to present their case, both the applicant and the residents. That's why we have public hearings. That's why we have state laws. I got two hats to wear up here. I have a trustee hat, and I've also been serving over a decade now on the Zoning Board of Appeals. So I try to weigh these things on findings of fact. It's hard to take the human emotion out. In our case, it's, it's like being King Solomon, almost. I have grandchildren, I have children. Also, I respect property rights. I believe in our Constitution. And that's why these gentlemen are here. They have the right to ask this board to possibly look at that am uh, amendment to that consent judgment. That consent judgment was made almost 24 years ago, folks. Nothing's happened there. We could have turned them down back on uh, May 15th. What does it hurt to ask to see what you'll do? Now, being in a position as a Zoning Board of Appeal or some PUDs, we get those too. The board has the final say on those. Sometimes we get good development, sometimes we don't. I have a favorite saying on the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, you're trying to shove 10 pounds of potatoes in a five pound bag. In this case here, it doesn't meet quite the criteria, which I had hoped it would have met, but it had a, a nicer development over there. One thing, I was on the public record last time. I got a lot to say, guys, so just hang, hang on. I'm going to go past the three-minute time limit. I, being up here, I can do that, <laughs> long as I'm, as long as I'm in order. Uh, I'll go, I have some notes here that we have been more and above, above board with the developer. Just as much rights as, as you, as you, you property owners have, have your rights too. I just got a list here. Uh, the reason I am supporting the denial, which is to mean no, we're going to keep the consent and agreement intact, is that uh, the Charter Township Oregon Board of Trustees approved uh, the mini minutes of May 15th, 2023. That's when we said, let's take a look at this. And then uh, we, tonight we just approved the uh, April 15th. We've held two public hearings on this. The Planning Commission held a public hearing twice, back on September 6, 2023, 
and then again on uh, March 20th of this year, 2024. And the township board, two of us serve on zoning matters. The rest of the township board doesn't. Our subject matter experts are, and our consultants are on the planning commission. We requested that they give us information. There was no recommendation on that. They don't have the authority to do a recommendation because a consent judgment is strictly up to this township board. And I take very seriously what these consultants say. So that's why I'm approving the denial on this. A yes vote will mean no to the developer, and we're going to keep the consent judgment intact. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rossi? Um, yeah, so I, I think I've made it very clear from um, the multiple times that I've um, been in front of you all and that you've come here and spoken that I am against it for a lot of the reasons that you've said, mostly, you know, the dozen plus variances and all of those things. It's, it just doesn't fit. Um, one thing I do, and, and so I think you all know how I'm going to vote, um, but one thing that I do um, want to thank everyone for uh, is the creative ways that you're looking at um, how to address your concerns with us. We did spend a lot of time on that master plan Many, many hours, many, many meetings that were open to everyone, not just three people, but a lot of different people who did participate. But what I really appreciate is the creative way that you looked at that and are bringing those things to our attention. And those are the things that matter when I hear it. I really like your idea about the STEAM, the STEM. That was really cool. That's creative, but it's not my property and it's not ours, so you put it in the atmosphere and see what happens. Um, but thank you guys for continuing to come out and talk to us, and um, that's, that's all I have to say about it. Thank you, Penny. Just from a historical perspective, um, I was in the assessor's office when the consent judgment was entered into, and we always expected it to be developed as office. And I was surprised when the development came for the apartments um, before the board. The deliberation, the respect that's been paid, everyone's listening, we're hearing from one another, I think is very important when we're making a decision like this. Also, from a historical perspective, my parents, Steve and Marlene Rubelman, got married at St. Joe's. And I'm familiar with the church. I love St. Joseph's. It was one of my favorite voting precincts for many years. And when you came to us and asked us to consider not allowing this, I immediately felt what you were feeling. It was important that we listened. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for all you put into this. I know it's a lot. We've done two meetings on this. We were ready to make a decision. The developers had the right to withdraw, but we were ready to make that decision on the 15th of April. I'm glad we're making it tonight. Julia. Just want to echo what Treasurer Urbanowski and Flood said, the variances, the, all of the things that would need to be done, the not fitting the judgment. Um, as a 20-year public educator, school safety could not be anymore at the top of my list as I live it every single day with the children of our community. But I want to say thank you to all of our residents who came out, who sent the letters, who are here and who came last time, just to make sure that we're listening to you and, and we really are. So thank you. Well, I'm not going to take the effort or pass on the opportunity to, to weigh in again, but I think you know with my motion where I stand. Um, so I'm born and raised here, grew up here, grew up going to St. Joe's Church, so I understand, uh, you know, the history. Played football there. It wasn't very good. Um, I've talked to, well, I, I, the thing that I wanted to address that came up on the last meeting that a lot of you were here was that... Uh, there was a lot of uh, frustration and anger regarding our giving the extra two weeks. And um, I, our job, number one, first and foremost up here, is to be responsible for the funds of the township. We're the fiduciary responsibility of making sure that dollars aren't wasted. And we aren't all experts. We're all, I mean, I'm, I'm a business owner, and, and uh, um, we have experts, and we listen to the experts. And I voted uh, to to push uh, that decision until tonight by the recommendation of our attorneys. And though I, I've luckily had the chance to talk to a lot of the members of the church who were here at the, the last uh, meeting, or at least a few of them, 
to, to uh, discuss this, and I think there was anger that night, and I think a lot of them understood, but I just want to be clear, we still have to make decisions best that are best for the overall uh, community, and they're, you're not always going to like them, and I, and I would, I, I really would encourage the church uh, members and the neighbors to start getting really creative and maybe thinking about these plans. I thought that was a great suggestion of a plan, but it doesn't mean anything until somebody's ready to put the money and time behind it. And, um, you know, I, I think we know how tonight's going, but there's an opportunity for you guys to make your own destiny and, and for the church and, and uh, that neighborhood to work together and to uh, come up with your own solution and to work with the bank. And to me, that seems like a, a great way forward. And I have nothing personal against the gentlemen trying to do their job up here. I think they all uh, have been very uh, eloquent and, um, and uh, professional, and, uh, and all, as of all of you. So I just want to encourage you, be open to the other things that come ahead of us. Sometimes we say no, and we might get what we hope, you know, might get what we don't want. By accident and so just being involved uh, which you guys all did and that's a wonderful thing by the way come to meetings get involved we love it uh, that's all I have to say thank you um, just just a few things from me um, look as a township supervisor this is my full-time job you elect me to to um, do a lot of things one of them is uh, we don't have an economic development staff like some <laughs> cities do it's Tammy Gerling our planner it's me it's our chief of staff Sam Timko a little bit um, and we are growing. We're, we've experienced urban sprawl. Um, and the good news about Orient Township is the reason I chose to move my family here and raise them here um, when they were little or not born yet <laughs> was because of all the same things you all said, the parks, the lakes. No matter what happens, um, but the, uh, no matter what happens, we're going to always be a third of our land mass is lakes and parks. And we're growing. We're building another pocket park on Baldwin this year. We, we've put $4 million into park improvements. There's no community around us that's done what we've done. None. I'm really proud of that. Um, we have a community we're living as a vacation, and some people think that's cheesy and hokey, but it's true. There's no, the reason our traffic is so bad is because we have construction happening, and there's no straight roads because of Bald Mountain State Recreation Area and 42 lakes. Um, the only two roads that go straight north and south all the way through our community without interruption is Baldwin and Lapeer Road, and there's construction everywhere that's dumping more traffic on those roads right now. It's going to be a horrible summer, I'm telling you right now. Um, but hopefully when we survive it, it'll be good for many years to come. Um, so I get it. We all totally get it. I think I mentioned this at the last meeting. The reason I got involved and the supervisor at the time put me on the planning commission is because I did the exact same thing you all did. I came to the podium about a neighborhood going in behind my house. And I've learned a lot through the years, and I've been in this role for 12 years, and I still don't know a lot. The one thing I do understand, and we do take very seriously, is our resident input, but also prop personal property rights. It's, it's a fact. Um, to the question, have we been out there? I can't speak for my colleagues. I've been out there dozens of times. I've been in the Brett's office multiple times. I've been in your, some of your living rooms at 8, 9 o'clock at night over the last 10 years. On my own time, I'm not required to do that. I was looking to try to bring people together to find a solution for this property. What it won't be is a park, unless someone decides it's not in the plan for the township to build another park there. It's not, I said that at the last meeting. Um, I had reached out to Father Jim. I worked with Father Mike for Shave for many years on this project. He retired in 2020, as many of you know who go to St. Joe's or have kids there. And the last time we had a real potential project with the bank, was an urgent care, a fast food restaurant, and residential. Those were the three pieces. And some of you saw that those plans in your living room when I came in with a real different realtor and different group of people. And we were looking to clean up the easements and the access to your homes. We were going to build, not we, the developer was going to build a road with a cul-de-sac and a berm and a fence to separate the properties on Manitou and North Lapeer from this development site. Um, it, I love the idea of a steam building. I, I would just echo what, what Kim said. Who pays for it? The township just bought a gym. We're going to convert that to a community center. It's going to be amazing. We have a very fiscally responsive board, and we don't have unlimited resources to buy every vacant piece of property. If this property, this parcel, will be developed at some point. And one of the things I want to share, not to be offensive, and I, and I kind of ran through this. You can look this on our website. Under the current consent judgment zoning, these are all things that it could be. And some people, 
I'm assuming if they came forward with a plan to do some of these things, we would have just as many people upset about a lot of these uses, and this is what they could build under office professional, professional medical offices, emergency medical clinics, hospitals, veterinary clinics, we already have one there, extended hour veterinary clinics, mortuaries, research and design centers, medical and dental laboratories, data processing and computer centers, light assembly, which could be anything, you know, transient workers, mini storage and warehousing, daycare centers and preschools, um, public service and government f facilities, private clubs, fraternal organization, lodge halls, places of worship. I'm just gonna say, look at Macomb Township, there is a highly controversial development happening there. It's a different faith coming to the community. They want to come to our community. I'm not getting religious here. They could come here and build something right next to the church that could be offensive to some people. Automotive repair, automotive retail, um, equipment sales, restaurants, drive through restaurants, uh, financial services, banks, real estate management services, travel agencies, pet grooming daycare, hotels and motels, assisted living facilities. These are all the things that are in, in our ordinance right now under office professional. The only thing that's really not allowed is outdoor storage of materials, supplies, vehicles, equipment, or similar items. So just, just to know, the, the township doesn't own this property, and I'm not trying to be offensive or, or, or anger anyone, but we have been working with this developer over the years and the bank, and they want to do something with the property. Lapeer Road is 50,000 cars a day. I didn't believe a traffic study when Bald Mountain came through, and that ended up being a lawsuit, and the township fought. And... Uh, I actually went out with the people that did the traffic study and, and counted cars because I didn't agree. I agreed with what you all said, 300 cars, it's gonna be crazy. Lapeer Road is 50,000 cars per day. Adding, this development won't be 300 cars, it won't. Um, the thing I would say is, it's a less intense use. If you look at our zoning, residential is less intense than office professional. Um, but, we, but we do, um, you know, we do understand um, the concerns of residents. And I can tell you every single one of us up here has children, either that we're in schools or we're not. Um, every one of our um, school buildings that are public school buildings in the township have residential developments directly abutting them, including some have rentals. Um, so we, we, we love, we agree that safety is paramount and, and it is true and we'll tout it again, but you know we have a very proactive police department because we continue to fund them. We are the safest community in, a, in the state of Michigan with more than 25,000 people, which is a huge uh, um, credit to our law enforcement. Um, you know, one of the things I mentioned to Father Jim when I ran into him at the prayer event this week um, at the memorial, thank you, Mr. Bernie, for organizing that, um, was would the church have an interest in purchasing the property? Here's the bank, here's the people that own it, do they wanna buy some of it? I don't know, that could be a, a good idea. I don't know what the finances of the church are. Um, so we are not being bullied. This is a process, and we would be, we have to go through this process. We, of course, take your input. But I'd venture to guess there's not a lot of things that anybody's going to be excited to see there. If a hotel wanted to come pop up right there on that site, I can bet you people would, my guess is people would probably be more stressed about that than, than, than currently what's being proposed. I could be wrong. Um, but I will tell you, that logo is important to me, and we are the envy of our region. We really are. 30% of our property is lakes and parks. No one other community around us can say that. And we are benefiting from a state park and a county park, but the township continues to invest in our parks and recreation and the safety of our community. So um, those are my comments, I think. <laughs> um, I will tell you, I've probably put more than 100 hours into this over the years, and I think that our kids are obviously extremely important as well but we won't be able to block this property from being developed forever. Um, every development that most of you probably live in, you're probably your neighbors. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be a, a jerk here, but it might co come across that way. I mean, I heard when I was fighting the development that was going in my backyard from people saying, we did the same thing when they built your neighborhood because I bought, built a new house in 2001. We didn't want your neighborhood here. Um, so all of us you know, are probably unless you're li we're living in the house that we built when we first moved here, you know, our family 100 years ago. Um, have, you know, when Keatington was built, that lots of you live in, some of you mentioned, that was a huge controversial development in the 70s because they're building around a lake and taking away farmland. Um, so that's the challenge we face. I would love it if the church bought some of the property or all the property. I think that'd be a great use. I'd love it if someone could come and build a steam center. If anybody's interested in that, 
connect with me. We will help you through the zoning process. I'm sure the bank would be interested in, in recouping uh, on their investment that they didn't want in the first place when they took this over in 2009. So those are my comments. Certainly appreciate everyone's emails. Um, thank you to, to, to the developers and the attorneys for meeting with the, uh, the representation of the parish, as I mentioned earlier. Um, Father Jim said that was a very pleasant meeting. He memorialized that in an email to our whole board this afternoon as well. Um, but it said that it didn't change their position on, on the current proposed plan, but hopefully something better would come and he could get the parish on board with that. So with that, um, those are all the comments from board and public. And the motion was made to deny. So a yes vote means to not allow the consent judgment to be amended, to keep the current zoning that isn't a consent judgment as office professional. Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Dalrymple? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Pfeiffer? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you all for your attendance and your um, interest in this case. Uh, we have two more items on pending business, and we'll keep moving right along. If You're welcome to stay, but if you are going to leave or congregate in the lobby, if you could um, congregate out there and not conversate in here so we can keep doing our business. Uh, we have a, another case from the Planning Commission, 2024 This is a township-initiated tax amendment, zoning ordinance 78. Do, do you want to, me to take this, Clerk Schultz, or do you want to take it? I got it. Um, second reading, PC 2404, township-initiated tax amendment to zoning ordinance number 78, 2024, updates to use matrix. On behalf of Tammy Gerling, Planning and Zoning Director, the Planning Commission at their March 20th, 2024 meeting passed a motion to forward to the Board of Trustees a recommendation to approve this PC 2404 Township Initiated Text Amendment. The Board of Trustees held and approved the first reading um, for this amendment on April 1st, 2024, and this second reading has been published and will hold this for tonight, May 6th. I, therefore, I move to declare that the second reading of PC 2404 Township Initiated Text Amendment to Zoning Ordinance Number 78, 2024, updates to use matrix Article um, 12, Section 7.01, Article 9.04, Articles 11.01, .01, Articles Section 14.01, Articles section 16.01 and 16.02, Articles 18.01 and 18.02, Articles section 23.01, Articles section 24.01, to have been held on May 6, 2024, to prove and to adapt. Support. Um, any comments as our planning commission representative, Mr. Ranowski? No, this is the special land use updates from the use matrix. There's, um, there's not anything major, but. And it is a second reading. Thank you, Tammy, for bringing these to the Planning Commission, ultimately to the board, as we are working to update things that need to be updated. All right, uh, any public comment on this? Seeing no one come forward. Uh, roll, any other board comment? I'm sorry. Uh, let's do a roll call. It's a second reading, please. Barnett? Yes. Schultz, yes. Pfeiffer? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Del Rimpel? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. One more item on pending. It's on page three. Uh, 406, this is the uh, special permit for the Orion Lighted Parade Group. Uh, do you want to take this, Clerk Schultz? Sure. On behalf of the Ordinance 76 Special, um, special Permit Orion Lighted Parade Group, the request is to approve the attached resolution approving the Orion Area Parade Group's application for a special liquor license permit under Ordinance 76 for the December 6, 2024 event. The reason is the request has been received from Bill Kokanis on behalf of the Orion Area Parade Group for a special permit under Ordinance 76 for special liquor license permit for the Holly Jolly Folly to be held December 6, 2024 at 1491 South Lapeer Road, Lake Orion. They're also requesting that the board waive the $300 application fee based on their status as a nonprofit. So um, all the information has been provided. We published and held the second reading. The attorney has provided his information. Therefore, I move to adopt a resolution recommending approval of Orion Lighted Parade Group's application for a special permit to the Michigan Liquor Commission for their December 6, 2024 event and waive the $300 special permit application fee to application nonprofit organization designation. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Uh, comments or questions? Mr. Kokanos talked to me. He said he's sorry he couldn't be here. He's out of the town with family, but this is a annual event. We all know about it because we all, I believe, I remember on this board, or most of us are there every year. 
Um, I fully support this. Thanks to Galling, Bill Galling, John Cooper, their staff for holding this event that lets us have the largest lighted parade in the world in Orient Township, Lake Orient. Uh, any comments, questions? Good event for our community. Thank yep. you, Bill. Yep. Just thanks to them. Yep. It's awesome. All in favor say aye. It's a, aye. It's, it's oh. a resolution, so if I can call the... Sure, go ahead and call the roll. Okay. I'm sorry, it's a resolution. Schultz, yes. Pfeiffer? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Darimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. That motion passes 7 0. We have five reports tonight. First is our police and fire report. Is there a motion? I move to receive and file the police and fire report. <clears throat> Support. Moved and supported. Again, all this information is on our website. Thanks to Lieutenant Ophira, Chief Brian Allen, for being here tonight. Uh, moved and supported. Any comments, questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Next is the 2023 Corridor Improvement Authority report. Um, just we'll pull that up on the screen here. Um, thanks to Chief of Staff Sam Timko for her assistance and Gary Roberts. Uh, and this is an annual required report. Um, that We do have a Corridor Improvement Authority on Brown and Baldwin Road, South, South Baldwin. Um, the good news, if you paid attention to this, this report's required, we have to submit it to the state to keep us compliant. Um, if you saw, attended, or watched afterwards the State of the Township, we um, talked about this a little bit because um, we are paying down um, the debt ahead of schedule, uh, and we have um, great development activity happening, uh, and this is a, a huge success to the Township. It was a, some considered a potential risk in 2016, but it is paying huge dividends to the Township, and thank you to those of you who were on the board at that time that supported this. And those are my comments, Mr. Flood. I move to receive and file the Corridor Improvement Authority 2023 annual report and authorize distribution of the report as required by Public Act 57 of 2018. And I was proud to support this when we did. Support. Moved by flood, supported by Dalrymple. Any other comments or questions from board members? Thank you for the timely report. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Timko. Any public comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Brings us to the first quarter treasurer's report. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, I uh, make a motion to receive and file the first quarter 2024 treasurer's report. Second. Support. Moved and supported. Any comments or questions? It was moved by Urbanowski. I had Pfeiffer for the support. Mr. Supervisor? Yes, Mr. Flood. I want to compliment our treasurer and her excellent staff for meeting the full requirements of our township investment policy and our sewer water fund. I'm glad to see we've got our reserve built back up. I was really concerned earlier last year. We are right down where we were at the bare minimum on having a fund balance. Because for the general public to know we do water and sewer, you're talking millions and millions and millions of dollars. And if you look at some of our communities, and one even resides in, inside our township, they are really struggling to pay for their waters and sewer. They have to take out millions and millions of dollars of bond. Fortunately, this township, ever since they've had a water and sewer project, and the managers and the previous boards did a good job on protecting this township and the ratepayers. That's my comment. Thank you. Yes, <clears throat> report. It's all on our website if you're interested in checking it out. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Planning and zoning report. Move to receive and file as presented. Support. Schultz and Dalrempo. Uh, very interesting report. Uh, Ms. Urbanowski, I'll pass it to you as our liaison. Yeah, this is really cool. Um, I love that we're doing this. This is great because honestly, I mean, I know that we're all hardworking in the building and we've got a lot of things going on, but you know, sometimes people fly under the radar and in my opinion, the planning and zoning department just does an excellent job and, and I'm, I'm really glad that we're recognizing your work. Uh, you know, it's not just the planning commission. It's not just, you know, the zoning board. It's also the assessing function that you guys have taken over. I mean, just look at that 64, 64 property transfer affidavits in one month. Um, all of these things that you guys do an excellent job of. And um, I'm really excited to see this report. 
Yes, agreed. Love it. Again, on our website if you're interested. But it's very organized and nice to, easy on the eyes, so thank you. And the planning department continues to be busy. All right, any other comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? One more report, the clerk financial reports. Okay, I move to receive and file the financial statements as presented. Report. And I just had a couple comments. Go ahead. Um, so you have the balance sheet, the income statements, and the manual journal entry reports provided by Tandem Graves in the clerk's office. Uh, every account is, a, um, is accounted for. Every fund is accounted for. You have all of the information that you need. And also, if you need detailed information on any of these funds, any of these accounts, get a hold of Tandem in the clerk's office, and she'll be able to go over those details with you. Okay. Any other comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Who supported? Uh, flood. Thank you. All right, that completes our business up here. We have public comment opportunity for the public to address us for three minutes. Anyone want to give public comments? Lil Hutchison, um, my comment is I've been to many of your uh, board meetings and I don't think anybody ever wants anything built around their area. I don't care if it's a, what it is. Uh, I think you're doing a good job <laughs> and it's hard to keep anybody happy. But uh, I, I, I'm not sure about uh, this project that was going on today but I know it's hard to make that decision, but nobody likes anybody or anything built next to them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hutchison. Anyone else? Yeah, Catherine Kennedy again. Um, you just quickly mentioned something about filing a state report that's an annual report. What was that for? I didn't catch that. Order Improvement Authority. Okay, so that is for the GMEV plan that's taking our money for Brown Road. So I don't understand why this authority is even eligible for us at all. And the reason is all these tax increment financing plans are supposed to be for communities with decreasing revenues. We haven't had decreasing revenue since probably 2008, nine, maybe one time. I've been here since 98. Our taxes always go up. And I actually am very concerned because when I attended the March 14th Oakland County Board of Commissioners meeting, which was at 9.30 a.m., so most citizens couldn't be there, they actually had a 1,248-page agenda. It included ink cyber currency resolution. I didn't get into the details, I didn't have time. But cyber currency was created by billionaires that want to take over US currency in global trade. The World Economic Forum is the key element that's pushing that. And I can't believe our own government has been foolish enough at any level to accept cyber currency because it's not a currency at all because no government in the world has the taxing power supporting it. So by definition, cyber currency is not a currency. In fact, the CEO of Chase Bank, when he was at a Senate hearing that I watched about the banking rules and they were talking about cyber currency, he correctly referenced it as a Ponzi scheme. Now, we had this other rich guy in had gotten uh, arrested and charged for that FTX, all the Bitcoin uh, fraud that happened then. Why are we even buying into that? And I think people here need to let the county know their fiscal changes are very detrimental to all citizens. What they're doing is not good. And uh, the, these particular programs have specific requirements and the Corridor Improvement Authority is supposed to be to prevent deterioration, promote economic growth, and encourage historic preservation in a business district. 
the district must meet the statutory criteria, which includes being adjacent to or within 500 feet of a road classified as an arterial or collector by the Federal Highway Administration. Well, we actually tore down the Palace of Auburn Hills to put whatever's going there. The garbage dump that used to be one of our biggest tax revenues, I thought, was waste management. Their issues have been reduced ever since we were forced to take the Canadian supplier, GFL. And I actually, as a citizen, I resent that both my water bill now, which has a QR code, which is a whole nother identity theft crisis, they're charging 10% per month compounded now on water bills and garbage bills. And that's just since GFL took uh, the calculations over, the accounting is off. It used to be quarterly, the water. When they converted to monthly, they raised it by 14%, and Ms. instead Kennedy. of a 10% fee, it's now 10% monthly compounded. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll address some of that. That's not accurate, unfortunately, but um, we're always happy to talk to you. Not at, um, anybody that has comment or questions or concerns, you can certainly come here and, and give public comment, but it's generally probably even more productive to come into our office and let our amazing and willing staff try to help, help um, and that's what we're here to, to do. So um, I will start tonight's board comments. Oh, is there anyone else from the public? Sorry. I'll start tonight's board comments um, down on this end. I think last time we were at <coughs> Bonner, we wrote to Mr. Pfeiffer tonight. Uh, well, it was uh, nice to have, uh, again, a full room. I think that it is uh, good for us and good for the community to have people that are involved. So uh, thanks to everyone who's hopefully at home still watching uh, that joined us tonight. Um, also want to, uh, uh, the mental healthness or mental health awareness month, uh, um, I think that's a really cool thing and something uh, that I'm excited about and a couple of our fellow board members are um, part of uh, a nonprofit uh, that we started called North Oakland Strong and we're going to be um, making a big donation to uh, a group uh, that is helping those in Oxford that are still um, dealing with the ramifications of what happened on November 30th. We've, uh, our community stepped up uh, um, dramatically to help create that nonprofit, to donate to it and fund it, and help us to uh, make a major impact to our neighbors, uh, uh, for our neighbors to the north, um, with a lot of cool support we're able to provide, and we're gonna be providing more. So mental health uh, awareness is extremely important. I think it's probably the most important health uh, crisis uh, that we face, and um, I am uh, glad that uh, that you made the decision, or that we made the decision to uh, to make uh, a month focused on it. So thank you. That is all. Thank you, Ms. Dalrymple. Uh, congratulations again to our new hires. Welcome to the team. My family has been loving being at the club and the pool and all of the other amenities, and we're so excited to share that with our community. And then one other note from school is that um, it is the time of the year where our seniors are playing water wars. So if you see kids in town with squirt guns hiding out looking for each other, it is uh, it has become a trend. And so the seniors are playing. They're in teams. It, they play by the week, and then there's a prize at the end. So if you see them hiding out outside of a business or outside of school or outside of a house, we tell them to be so careful. But if you see kids with squirt guns, that's all that they're doing is having good fun. Thank you, Ms. Schultz. <laughs> Noah, it's good to see you here tonight. I know you're here every couple of months, so it's always nice to have you in the audience. It was really good to see all the students here tonight, too. We had a good um, participation of the youth. I think that's super important. It tells the health of the community when the kids are engaged. I want to um, say thank you to ONTV for hosting their volunteer appreciation banquet this past um, Friday, rather Friday, April 26th. It was fantastic. It was at Palazzo's. We all had a great time. I know ONTV always tells our story, and they're with us every step of the way, and I just want to give a shout out to this wonderful group. They really make Orion shine, and are very grateful for all of their hard work and their volunteerism. Also, applications to request an absent voter ballot. We mailed those out to everybody for the presidential primary election. If you still have that application and you want to submit it, you can submit that anytime to the clerk's office. We're already preparing for that August election, and we're starting to get requests for AV ballots. 
We're still in need of election inspectors. We're getting ramped up again, getting people trained, and we're always glad to have people be a part of it. It's a paid position, and it's a great way to get involved in the community. So that's it. Thank you, Melinda. What else? Um, I just want to say again, congratulations and welcome to the team, uh, David and uh, his lovely little son, uh, cutie cutie. Congratulations to the Oakview Cyber Dragons. And then I just want to clarify one thing. Good news, we don't accept Bitcoin in the Treasurer's Department, so no worries there. <laughs> Rats, that's all I could pay my taxes with. Mr. Flood. I was going to pay my taxes this year with that. I got it. Sorry. Uh, don't do it. I took two comments here. Uh, uh, last Monday, I had the privilege and honor of Going with our director, Tammy Gerling of Planning and Zoning, <clears throat> and Tiffany, along with uh, our great residents who serve on the Planning Commission and on the Zoning Board of Appeals. We had to take a, we didn't have to, we, we took a continuing education class down at the Albrooks Patterson Executive Office Building in Oakland County. And it's more or less a refresher, and you always learn something. It was sponsored by the uh, was it the Michigan Planning and Zoning, uh, American Planning Association, Michigan chapter. And a, uh, our presenters were from uh, Wade Trim. And I think we fulfilled uh, five hours of our mandatory six hours of training. Now, uh, if people aren't familiar with that. If you serve on the Planning Commission, Zoning Board of Appeals, I think he was, I don't know about elected officials, but uh, I don't think he can be. I was that mal is that malfeasance, Mr. Kelly, if they don't attend their training? <laughs> no, comment. no comment. Okay. But anyway, uh, great refresher course. And lastly, uh, probably th Mr. Barnett will probably address this later on too, but it was an honor and a privilege to attend the Orient Area Youth Assistance uh, 24 2024 Youth Recognition Award Ceremony. Uh, it was just held uh, last Thursday at the Orient Center. And... These are our bright future students who are mentors to our disadvantaged uh, students, sponsored jointly by Orion Township and the village of uh, Lake Orion and the 52nd Third Court. I know it's still your thunder, Chris. But no, it's not. But it was a great, great uh, tribute to those, those uh, excellent students. Our future is bright here with these, these kids. Someday they'll be sitting right here. They can take my spot tomorrow if they wanted to. That's, that's my comment. Yeah, Mr. Bernie. It's been a long meeting. Looks like most of you could use a beer. But speaking of beer, I wanted to tell you about um, the, the pub crawl is um, coming up June, June 28th. So uh, just announced today a couple things. First of all, this is the first year it's ever been on a Friday. Secondly... We're moving into Oxford as well. So it'll be Oxford and Orion. Um, both DDAs are participating. Uh, so a big collaboration this year. Uh, we're looking for a charity partner um, that benefits both communities. So it's exciting. Uh, it's the ninth year for this event. Um, so we're hoping to have a record-breaking year and lots of fun, raise some money for charity, and uh, obviously support our businesses. And um, you know, during a time, they're typically slow. So. Sorry for the corny segue, but um, <laughs> it has been a long meeting, and I could use a beer, so. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Um, That's all. Are we still calling it Lake Orion's American Summer? Yeah, so, yeah. <coughs> so it's still Lake Orion's American Summer. There's still the restaurant week. There's still all the planning. Um, it just so happens that just the pub crawl is going to happen in both communities. The restaurant week is still just Orion. We'll see what happens next year, but um, we wanted to branch out and bring more people to the party, if you will. I have a question for Mr. Burns. Yeah. Isn't that considered North Orion? Mm -hmm. Well, you know. <laughs> Not to Oxford. Yeah, so it should be fun. So mark your calendars, June 28th, Friday. Doesn't conflict with anything else. June 28th? June 28th. Yep. All right, thank you a few from me. Thank you to everyone who participated and, and helped tell our story with the state of the township. Um, it's available to be streamed online. ON TV's got it on their YouTube channel. We've had it on our, our website, I think. Um, but that's a fun opportunity to talk about the things we've done. 
And the, and the good news is we did all the things we said we would do. And then also it's sort of like our report card and then talk about the things we're working on and, and we did a lot of that too and the future is bright. Um, so thank you for, and the restaurants that all participated, it was an evening event because we heard feedback from the community from people that aren't, haven't been able to attend the other 11 years that I presented it and it's been a morning event. So we switched to the evening. Thank you to Woodside Church for being an amazing host um, to the township uh, for that event. And then a um, couple other things here. Um, we want to give some credit to our fire department. You can't see this on your screen, I'm sure, but they did some important CPR and AED training um, at Galling GMC. We got a really nice um, compliment from the, the crew at Galling, and then we also had a life save um, from another resident who, who was very heartfelt. Um, so, I mean, we could probably put one of these up at every meeting, but just know that it's not just responding to the 911 calls. We're, we're able to be proactive. So thanks, Chief, to you and your team and our EMS coordinator, Kyle Cameron, who led that effort for us. Um, the uh, road projects, we got, we're, uh, Miller and Conklin and Joslyn are done. Um, and so those were the easy ones. <laughs> uh, and if you go drive, I just was at a meeting on, on um, last week for the kickoff of the Roads Around GM meeting. Uh, uh, plant roads around the GM FedEx plants. Um, that project is underway, and uh, the roundabout at Baldwin and Clarkson will will be starting soon. And we know Indianwood is still closed, so um, traffic is going to be worse this summer than hopefully many many summers to come. But um, improvements are necessary, needed. Um, and then let's see a couple more things from me. Uh, there's a dine to donate event this Thursday. Um, supporting Pine Tree Center, where I um, historically DJ'd that event with um, DJ Nick, who's um, my buddy over at Pine Tree Center. Pine Tree Center is a school for special needs students. That's Thursday at OPA, um, and usually a fun event. I don't promote every event in the community, but that's um, when we're working with our students that get overlooked often. Those ones, they get the light shined on by me as often as I can. Um, and then a couple other programs that we have going this, this year, a new one, um, our shrink wrap program. Um, now that the weather's nice and lots of boats are getting back in those 42 lakes, um, you can stop here um, during normal business hours and pick up your easy fill recycle bag for your boat shrink wrap. Um, instead of having all that shrink wrap go into our landfill, we can recycle it. It's free um, to residents. You just need to come pick up your bag and there's a drop off location at Friendship Park, um, basically between now and May 31st. I'm sorry, you can drop them off. You can drop them off. You can pick up the bags now, but you can drop them off at Friendship Park in an in a, um, area underneath the tent, May 23rd to June 5th. More information at the Public Services Department. And then the last thing I want to cover is um, we relaunched our Youth Advisory Council um, this year, and they are doing awesome things, including the Saturday where they did, this was their, their initiative, their desire, their plan um, to do a community yard cleanup for seniors. We had uh, almost 30 senior citizens sign up to get some assistance. This small but mighty group took five of those homes, and thanks to Woodside Church for taking the rest. Um, that was their spring day cleanup as well. And a special thanks to Chelsea Petrucia and Brittany Bunker, Chelsea in Parks and Rec, and Brittany in the Treasurer's Office, who are the youth advisors for this amazing group. Here's some cool pictures, but these kids spent most of their day Saturday um, helping people in our community, senior citizens namely, that were in need of some um, assistance. And you can see all the seniors were super happy to have their help. Um, so thank you to the Youth Advisory Council um, for coming out and doing amazing things. And our next meeting is two weeks from today, May 20th. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn at 941. Ooh, smart. Flood and Bernie, all in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.